Hello! Welcome. Everyone can say hello as we are, are welcome back to, to a very special episode of Foundry Virtual Tabletop Presents The Demon Queen Awakens. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. Greetings. Welcome. Hey, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're really excited for part two of this adventure. I think we all had a great time with part one, and we are looking forward anxiously to see what awaits uh, further within the vault of Aten. Um, so, I am your host, Andrew. I am a developer of Foundry Virtual Tabletop, and I will be your dungeon master for today. And I am joined by a wonderful cast of talented players and interesting characters who are joining me on this adventure. Uh, I'll have everyone introduce themselves for anyone who did not catch part one. Um, but first, for a bit of context, I will give a brief synopsis of where we left off after the first part of our adventure. Uh, so I'll, I'll actually go ahead and display this on your screen as well, Matt. Um, but our adventure began last time on part one. Uh, 1,000 years ago, the terrible demon queen, Neheb Kelat, ruled an empire that spanned a continent. None survived who could resist her after her terrible conquest, save those of an ancient and clandestine order called the Eyes of Aten. At the cost of many lives, this heroic order defeated Neheb Kelat and her four dread generals and imprisoned their souls within the Vault of Aten a secret tomb and prison designed to keep the Demon Queen in chains for 1,000 years. The time has now arrived, 1,000 years later, that those chains have weakened and the lone descendant of the Eyes of Aten, a Magi named Abasi, bears the burden of thwarting Neheb Kalat's return. Abasi had hoped for mighty and famous heroes to join in his quest, but the champions which volunteered for this terrible adventure were right. unconventional. <laughs> the feared folk are a ragtag collection of goblinoid fighters, formidable heroes, but not the conventional protagonists that prophecy had expected. Abasi and the heroes entered the vault of Aten, unlocking the ancient sealing mechanism and discovering that all is not completely well within the tomb. The ancient protectors of the eyes of Aten had not awakened. To during their millennial slumber were destroyed or corrupted by Anubet, the Stygian monolith, one of Neheb Kilat's generals. The heroes ventured deeper into the vaults of the tomb and encountered Circatraj, the Midnight Whisper, one of Neheb Kalat's dread generals. And after a very nearly deadly encounter, the feared folk persevered and pushed back Circatraj's darkness, destroying her avatar and recovering the scepter of night from the sarcophagus in her sepulchre. Knowing that time is short, for the heroes have but 24 hours to complete the rebinding ritual before Neheb Kalat escapes her bonds. The heroes pushed onwards, learning more of the history of what transpired and meeting last, a lone surviving Shabti. They discovered a secret passage full of rushing water, which they descended to plummet outwards into a verdant chamber, face to face with none other than Ansubek, the shadow beneath. And that's where we resume with The Demon Queen Awakens, part two. And before okay. I jump into that encounter, I would love for each of you to give a quick introduction. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself as a player, as well as the character that you are playing, starting with Amy. 
Hi, I'm Amy. I am co-founder of Arcanist Press. I am project manager at Sigil Entertainment Group. I am also the VTT conversion manager at Pinnacle Entertainment Group. I'm playing Saldry today. He is a forest gnome. He has a tendency to get into things that he shouldn't and likes to touch things, mostly because they end up breaking and that's interesting. Awesome. Uh, next, we have Andrew, also Andrew, uh, a.k.a. Kalego, uh, who is playing Gruck. Uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm, I'm Kalego, more commonly known. Um, I'm the, the first among equals of the, the ringmasters of the League of Extraordinary Foundry Virtual Tabletop Developers, or whatever our name is. And is that part of the official name now? <laughs> Might as you well know, be. Or whatever the name I is. I think yes. I think yeah. I might I might decree that. Um I will be playing Gruck, who is a goblin cleric, but he's really a chef first and foremost, and right now he's he's staring at the uh at the at the form of Ansubek, wondering, is that a crocodile or is that a gator? Because it matters when I cook it. Don't don't start recipe crafting too soon, sir. Uh, <laughs> and uh, next we have, let's see, let me actually go in camera order. So that means we have Dan. All right. I am Dan, better known as Nork. I am representing the Foundry Discord community in general uh, at the moment, but I wear many hats. I'm part of the league, so I get to make fun of its name as well. Um, and yes, I am playing Malik, who is a very frightful looking creature. He's eight feet tall, 300 pounds, bristling with fur and rippling muscles, giant gleaming <clears throat> whole arm, and the look of a small terrified dog on his face as he looks <laughs> at this enormous croco beast, quakes a bit, and uh, his hand kind of strays to the, the sack by tied to his belt, almost like as a nervous habit. And mm. that, that's me. How mysterious. That brings us to Ian. Hello, I'm Ian. I write music under the name Tabletop RPG Music, uh, including in a module that you can get for Foundry. Uh, and today I'm playing Gremel, who is an, an old goblin woman um, who is still uh, keeping up with everyone else. And she's uh, an old owl bear herder and now kind of uh, takes her cowgirl style into dungeon delving. So we'll see what happens. Fantastic. Uh, I love, love this character. Um, and uh, last but certainly not least, we have Matt. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm part of the Foundry VTT team and uh, also behind the Encounter Library YouTube channel that uh, pretty much just talks more and more about Foundry. Uh, that's pretty much all I do. And uh, I will be playing Cree, a half-orc uh, Oath of Devotion paladin who... Uh, is normally a pretty big guy in a group, but uh, next to Malik, not so much so. And he has the kind of wry confidence and smile that only comes with uh, ignorance and being unaware of the situation that he's found himself in. Fantastic. And Matt is also handling uh, streaming duties for us. So what you'll see during the adventure is from the player perspective so that I can keep my secrets um, and keep you all in suspense. And so, uh, with that, we will advance back into our adventure. You had plummeted out the aperture of this shaft of water, this torrent issuing you forth into a large and verdant chamber. And I will set the audio landscape here a bit appropriately. As you enter into the Sepulchre of Dawn, whether you had intended to reach this tomb or had simply been exploring remains to be seen. But let me move you over to the scene where you have emerged. I'll give Matt a moment to get the camera oriented as I describe what you are looking at. 
I think maybe the water is a bit loud. Yeah, I was just turning that down a little bit on my end. I'll I'll touch it a bit as well. It's wanted want it to be there, but not uh, overpowering. Um, all right. So, you have arrived in the Sepulchre of Dawn. Water floods this chamber from several grated openings, filling the lower areas with turbulent and murky water. It is cold, it is murky, and no matter how much water seems to cascade in, the chamber simply does not completely fill. Bobbing waterborne lotus flowers float on the surface, perpetually blooming and strangely lovely in this curious underground atmosphere. At the center of the chamber, a broad platform holds a sealed sarcophagus, a tomb of white stone, turquoise, gold, and silver inlay. Canopic jars are nested carefully against its sides, accompanied by pots of flowers that seem to be forever perpetually vibrant and alive. Toward the southern end of the chamber, a huge stone throne rests between two outlets of noisily rushing water. A massive hulking form rises from that throne, taking notice of your ungainly entrance. The figure stands, taking up a great ceremonial sword. This creature is covered in rough green hide and has long claws at the ends of his fingertips the head of a mammoth crocodile. You can surmise nothing else but that this is Ansubek, the shadow beneath, one of Nehebkalat's terrible generals that you have been warned of and tasked to defeat. What would you like to do in this brief moment before Ansubek reacts to your presence. Healing potion. How <laughs> deep is the water? <laughs> mm. I think Saldry's missing from the tokens. Uh, she is beneath the brazier, just to the north of you. She's kind of hiding oh, up yeah. there. Oh, I see. Hidden overhead tiles. Oh, I see. Love ah, it. yeah. <laughs> nice. How deep is this water? Am I treading water right now? You are treading for sure. Oh boy. You look down and you have some difficulty seeing the bottom and you're not sure if what you're seeing is a bottom or if it is just untold murky depths. Goody. Uh, I want to turn to Malik and say, M Malik, it might be time for one of those potions that we acquired for you. Uh, <laughs> You, you want to go big or you want to go fast? Uh, I, I'm going small, he's, apparently. He's going small. <laughs> uh, he, is, he is going for four points of healing. Uh, uh, should have used the bigger potion. He's busy drinking and he's making frantic faces around the bottle. And like half of it spills it's out It's difficult the front. to drink while treading water. You're kind of like <laughs> trying to stay afloat while getting the healing potion down. The rest of you, Gruk, Saldri, Gremel, Kree, any actions before while Ansubek is rising off of his throne? Mm. I want to look at my gloves yeah, and then I think look I at him. Probably... <laughs> <laughs> or you can go first, I mean. No, go ahead. Oh, I'll just look at my gloves, look at him, and I'm going to start running in his direction. Okay, we'll come to that in a minute because that's going to depend on your initiative in this yeah. in this in, in this instance. Um, anyone else? Malik, you're drinking a potion. Yeah. You have, but you have a potion of enlarge, right? I, I have another potion, but I, I'm I'm busy uh, at the moment. He, he took okay. he's, like already, he's, he's already mid drinking. I yeah. could I could There's just cast next enlarge round. on you, oh. so you have, you're free for the first action. But if you've got a potion already, I won't do that. I, I am just going to um, get my pistol ready and aimed and uh, just look at this giant creature and say, I've wrestled owl bears bigger than this. Well, we'll see if uh, your experience in owl bear herding bears much relevance when it comes to this terrible general. Uh, because it does seem as if this creature is intent upon 
violence. There is that posture in his bearing. And as he rises from his gray stone throne where he imperiously surveys the sepulcher of dawn, he speaks in a deep-throated language that when you first hear it, it there's it takes some moment to, un, to figure out if it's on anything you understand or not. But he rises and says, Ol usval tos dulva leknas, kareknal karek vos. And he starts to step towards you. You think that means welcome? Please have a drink. <laughs> Is our friend here too? Or did he uh, not come through the chute? I am, well, firstly, I'm checking what languages you all speak. Nothing that sounded like that. I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, I have, it looks like actually one or two of you. Mm, it's not that. One or two of you might actually be short a language or two on your sheets. I'm not sure. You might want to check whether you get one from your background or something. But uh, does it seem like any of you understand what has just been said? And as the figure rises, he picks up the sword with a dangerous intent. And I need all of you to please roll initiative. Ooh, dear. <laughs> this would be a good time not to be last. <laughs> oh, boy. Might not have a choice. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, no. Not have a choice. <laughs> Ansubek <laughs> rises from his throne, picks up his sword, and moves with a raw animalistic power that is only ever illustrated by the most dangerous of nature's predators. He leaps off of the pedestal where he is currently standing and flies onto the central island. Coming over towards you, Kree, he swings with terrible intent. Uh, first, lashing out with his blade. That is a 29 to hit. Ooh. Unshockingly, that will hit. <laughs> <laughs> you sustain 20 points of damage Ooh. as Ansubek cleaves into you, following that up with a swipe with his other hand, his vicious claw raking across your body. That I is a 19 to hit. <laughs> I'll throw up my shield as the claw comes in and trying to hold close the wound in my arm. Excellent. You manage to, a little too slow to react against the sword, you fend off the claw. As he swings at you, he jumps with the remaining movement into the water, swimming towards Gruck and trying to take Gruck in his formidable jaws. Uh -oh. That is a natural one. Oh. <laughs> Gruck, how do you evade this attack? Um, panickedly. <laughs> something, something unexpected works out in your favor because you were too panicked to really respond to yourself. What went Definitely. wrong for Ansubek here? He probably grabbed one of my boots. Um, and it just slipped right off. I, it I slips right off. Big. Ansubek descends into the water, becoming difficult to see. He moves 10 feet down out of your reach. Uh, it's an attack of opportunity if someone's ready to take one. I don't think we... Yes. Do we... You no, weren't surprised. surprised. You weren't surprised. Okay. Yes, I will uh, happily <laughs> stab the waters. Yes, yeah, I'm also going to with a meat cleaver. I will whip. Whipping into the water. It seems difficult, but somehow Gremmel's mastered it for years <laughs> of all they're hurting. Um, attacks coming in. Ansubek seems to relish this challenge and like 
he pays no mind to these blows. However, Gremel, Kree, and Malak, you all hit. Nice. Uh, would I get sneak attack damage as well on that? Um, let's Given see. He was kind of within five feet of everyone, was... I guess, as he was descending. I would say, at, yeah, else. I would say he was engaged. So yes, you would get your sneak attack damage. Uh, it's once per round, of course, right? Or is it once per turn? Or it's turn, once yeah. per turn, I think. Oh, so yeah, I can actually use time. it. Very good. Time. Right. Oh no, two. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Oh wow, two. Oh no, I rolled snake eyes. <laughs> I, I rolled a one on my divine strike. All right, so what have we got here in terms of damage? Uh, Gruck, you cleave in for... Nothing. Nothing. You missed. Right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to rub it in. Gremel, <laughs> you, you whip Anzubek for uh, your Still sneak attacks too, but... Yeah, my, the, wa the water total. is just water. It's and the water. Is yeah, it's the, it's the water. Um, Malak, you cleave into Ansubek for 12 points of slashing damage. And 5 points of necrotic damage. Oh, all right. my divine fright uh, powers my brain. Divine fright. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, and it's 8 points of slashing damage from Kree as well, yes. correct? Yes. Um, Ansubek descends into the water uh, out of your vision, descending with his final remaining movement. Well, actually, let me double check that. Let's see. Uh, nope, he can go a little further. He's going to descend ever further into the um, dark waters beneath. And that is his turn. Gremel. Okay, you, uh, I, is it, are we in difficult terrain in this water? Um, well, it's water, so unless you have... It's deep water, so unless you have a swim speed, it would be difficult terrain, yes. Okay, in which case, I'm going to move um, 10, 20, 25, 30. Uh, I'm going to move to here. Now, I can see it with my pistol, right? But given that it's beneath the water, is that going to impose any kind of disadvantage on me? You can see it. Um, I would give it I would give it a cover bonus rather than than ruling it as disadvantage on your attack. Okay, I'm just going to shoot at it twice, I think. All right. So the first one 25. Yeah, 25. 25 hits, certainly. And the second... Uh, 23, 23 also hits. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, no sneak attack on this one. However, uh, I do a total of... Uh, 23 damage. Aiming Very down impressive. in the water, just as if it's not there, the bullets just go straight through into it, and you see like some blood coming up through the water. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is a, some very impressive shooting uh, from Gremel. And anything else on your turn? Um, no, that's that's everything. I think I, I, I'll my my steel defender will take the dodge action with All right. my, with my bonus action command. Yeah, fantastic. Well, at the end of your turn, Ansubek is going to use a legendary action. You hear the water resonate with this low, rumbling growl that you all find to be deeply unsettling. Uh, as the waters roil and churn, Ansubek uses dreadful vibration. Uh, Malak, Gruk, I need, and Kree, I need the three of you to make a wisdom saving throw. As we within within friendship range of Kree? Uh, you should be, so I believe you get plus two if you're within 10 feet of me. Let me double check. Okay. Yep. yep, you both are. Nice. Nice reassuring meat shield. So 14, I didn't have my plus two. <laughs> 14 for Kree uh, is a failure. 25 for Grok is a success. 18 for Malik. 
meets the saving throw. So Malik is uh, protected against all odds from this <laughs> type of fear. Uh, however, Cree, you are frightened of Ansubek, having tasted the wrath of his blade of the rushing waters. You know that this is a foe that you're not sure if it's within your capabilities or not, and you are afraid. It is now your turn, however. So I, with fear, do I have to move as much away, you or just can't you get cannot, You don't have to move away. You cannot move closer voluntarily, um, and you have disadvantage on your attacks against the source of your fear. Okay. In that case, I am mm-hmm. going to look at everybody else and be like, uh, this one's seeming a little bit beyond me, fellas. Uh, and I'm going to cast Bless for uh, Gruck, Malik, and Saldry, and can I reach Grimmel? And also Grimmel, uh, so that's four, so I can do... I will cast that at second level. Oh, very nice. So who are your targets again? You said Gruk? Uh, Gruk, Malik, Saldry, and Grimmel, right. so everybody. Everybody but myself. Malik. Oh, how generous. <laughs> I'll apply this effect uh, to everyone for you. Uh, Gremel and Saldry as a encouraging benediction is issued by a very frightened Kree. <laughs> and uh, that will end it for me. All right. Um, at the end of your turn, Free, Ansubek is going to use another. Well, no, no, he won't. <laughs> Malik, it's your turn. Okay, so yes, this wave of terror kind of rushes out, but this is what I do all the time. I'm terrified all the time anyway, so it doesn't really make much difference. <laughs> I've learned to cope. I am it's going Tuesday. to. Yeah, pretty much. I am going to swim over this terrifying, awful thing, and try to haul myself out onto the ground over here um, with the 15 feet of movement. Now, how far down in the water is this thing? It is 20 feet beneath you. Unfortunate. I am going to uh, grab a hold of two of my javelins and start to whip them into the water at him. Um, you are in the water. He is also in the water. Uh, I am you, not the attack. in the water. Oh, I'm sorry. No, correction. You stepped onto the... Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at Kree still. Uh, all right. Yes, he has a cover bonus, but go ahead and make your attack rolls. All right. As you hurl these spears into the water, that hits 30, absolutely. Nice. Ah, he rolled a 29 earlier. Just got to one-up him just a little bit here. Uh, not on damage, though, I don't think. So... On damage, I do Ooh. 10 points. I'm just double checking to see if my uh, Divine Fury Strike is in fact applicable to ranged attacks. It's ranged attacks are not something I do very often. <laughs> Let us see. Uh, with a weapon attack, it does. So I will add my necrotic damage. Do oh, that's you have to be raging? I do have to be raging. Never mind. I will not be adding that. So, uh, and Does I that will... mean that I would refund the one from previously? <laughs> oh, I think that you should. Yes, that is. All right, that was six point. points of damage, was it not? Uh, it was. No, it was five. It was All right. five points of damage. I am no. accidentally wheedling out a few extra damage points mm. here. <laughs> I am glad I checked and discovered my fraud. I will, however, <laughs> launch my second attack into the water. Is that right? 21 with the cover bonus of being under the water like this just misses. Um, wow, Ooh. okay. Unlucky. Good. Ah, uh, well, I will... Uh, Wait for him to reemerge. It's a lot of it's a lot of water that spear has to travel through. That's it was true. very close. All right, I am. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to use a bonus action. And I am going to rage as well. All right. The expectation that something's probably going to hurt me. 
We shall see, sir. We shall see. Um, at the end of your turn, Ansubek will use his next legendary action. As he suffered an additional wound, he realizes that he's not as hidden within the water as he wishes to be. He will spend his remaining two legendary actions on the shadow beneath as Ansubek dives ever more deeply into the water, disappearing completely from view. He takes the hide action. Sneaky. All right. Mal uh, Grok, it is your turn. Uh, what is your passive perception? Passive is 15. You are not, you are no longer able to see on Subek. Guys, he went under the water, guys. That, that ain't good. Uh, I'm gonna get out of the water as quickly as possible and clamber over Malik. <laughs> um, trying to be as respectful as, as possible given the circumstances and gonna take a look at Cree uh, and say, Cree buddy, you, you're, you're doing great. Everything's gonna be okay. I'm going to Channel Divinity, Twilight Sanctuary. Um, I'm not going to bother with the measured template because it's a 30 foot radius of me, which reaches like everywhere in this room. All right. Uh, let's see. This creates dim light. It Correct. gives the temporary hit points to each of your allies. If we and... already have some temp HP. Or, or you can end an effect. Or I can end an effect of being frightened oh, or charmed. So nice. at the end of everybody's turn, if they're frightened, they will become not frightened. Otherwise, they might get temp HP. Ooh. Nice. Awesome. Very effective. Um, that was action. As bonus action, um, I'd like to fish a potion out and toss it to Malik. Um, just so he has it. Is that okay? Yeah, I'd say that can be an object interaction. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna throw Malik a potion of growth, just so you have one, buddy. Okay. In case you, you want to be, be bigger than you are. All oh, right, I will transfer that over to your inventory. If it what was it in your inventory previously, Gruck? It is in mine, yes. Oh yes, potion of growth. There you go. I will drop that over here for um, for Malik. I'm not sure Malik needs to be any larger, but um, <laughs> always oh, he does. Here. Yes. Anything else on your turn, Grok? That's it for me. All right, Saldry. One second. Uh, so I think that Saldry would like to wild shape because this crocodile seems familiar and I feel like he could do that in just a second if I could get my cheat to cooperate. Uh, there we go. Um, so Saldry is going to wild shape into Ooh, a crocodile. <laughs> this way, ostensibly, we'd be able to keep an eye on where this thing is. Nice. Uh, so I have a crocodile sheet too. So that way I have a swim the, speed. The counter croc. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> be nice if it were a big one, but um, so Saldry was trying to keep an eye on roughly where he saw the thing surface, and so he would um, kind of drop into the water. I think if I just drag the actor onto the table, can I get the crocodile token or? Uh, this is not I one I've can, actually done yet. Yeah, no, no problem. Didn't get wild shape last time. I can, I? I can apply it for you. I'm not sure I actually gave you permissions to the crocodile, so that's probably why. Let me apply this for you. Thank you. Ooh. Oh Holy my gosh, that's a giant crocodile. Up. That's a <laughs> giant <laughs> crocodile. Are you? Yes. Are you yes, I will uh, that crocodile. Are you, oh, no, wait a minute. Are you? A, are you allowed to wild shape into a giant crocodile? What kind of? What kind of druid are you? Definitely. I definitely. Not a wild one. No. <laughs> what? What kind of crocodile should this be? I would be? like a CR five. Yeah, I am sure. Shape. I'm sure. This is. This should be a regular it, crocodile. Just a regular one. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. It, it, All it, right. It, it, it's still a large beast, but not that, that large. That would have been that would have been really <laughs> cool, but uh, just 
just a regular, still still pretty large, but uh, just a regular. When I large, grow up to be a big out. druid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, still very intimidating, um, and very very cool. Uh, so you turn into a a crocodile. Um, very surprising, very exciting. Soldier feels okay in the water now. So, um, like I said, he would go um, and try and dive in roughly where he saw the creature submerge after his poor party mates had gotten swiped at. Um, I don't know how well he'd be able to see um, what's under well, the water. I assume that crocodiles can see pretty good under the water. Right? Yeah, in interestingly, um, the terrible vibrations that are emanating off of Ansubek, once you assume the form of a crocodile yourself, you begin to have a directional sense of where they are coming from, and it seems as if the origin of these underwater sonic vibrations is somewhere to the south, southwest of you, but deeper mm. beneath the surface as you're still kind of up towards the surface. Right. So Saldry would submerge at least 10 feet down. And let's see what I have a swim speed of 30. So um, I guess wild shaping. Saldry would have wild shaped right at the edge and flopped into the water as a crocodile. So I don't know if that would count as some of the movement or. I, I would say. So I would say. Am I you cheating were, to actually go? No, I that? think it's okay. So it, your initial wild shape would have put you like here. Uh, so from mm, there, I was on the corner, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So he's gonna scooch down and go about ten feet underwater. There. I'm sorry that I'm taking up no on top of other tokens. And see if he can see anything there. And if he can't see anything or get at anything from there, he will hold an action to bite anything that comes near him. All right. Yeah, it doesn't seem as if Ansubek is within your range just yet. Uh, what is the range on your bite attack? Is it just, yeah, it's just five feet. Not within your range just yet, although feet, yeah. you can hold your action in case Ansubek gets closer. Yes, please. Anything else on your turn? No, I think that's good. Those action movement bonus action, right? Yeah. Or not action, but bonus right. action. Wow, check. So we good. Top, top of the round. The terrible tremors continue. You do not see Ansubek yet, but on initiative 20, he is going to use his lair action. Um, real quick, end of end of Saldry's turn, gain temp HP. Good call. Uh, have you rolled, are you? 10. 10, 10 temporary hit points for uh, Saldry, very nice. In her crocodile form. Uh, Ansubek uses his lair action to activate um, the waters within the chamber begin to roil and churn and suddenly with a great surging momentum they rise up. The torches around the room begin to gutter and get quenched by the surging torrent of water as Ansubek activates the waters rise. Oh. Oh, no. The entire no. room is plunged into dark, flooding water. It is now Ansubek's turn as he swims directly towards Grok. It is at least dim light in here. Uh-oh. Someone just noped right out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> And she's the no, croc. She should this. be. Come on. Uh -huh. She's the most okay here. Oh no. <laughs> uh huh. Nope. Uh, oh yes. As Ansubek becomes visible, swimming directly at you, Gruck, he is going in for the bite. As he gets within ten feet, he is met with a polearm. As I react and smash into him. All right. Damn it. And this time, I am raged. Uh, well, he might not be met with a polearm. <laughs> yes, the 16 misses, I'm afraid. As he goes in for the bite, 
on Gruk. That is another My natural boot. one. My it, is the other, it is the other boot. <laughs> on Subeka, it's zero for two on on the boots. Guys, right I'm now. out of boots. Um, <laughs> Where's the little boot? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. That is not that is not the way that he envisioned that going. Uh, maybe he's rusty after his century of imprisonment, uh, or millennium of imprisonment. He is going to continue moving around underwater, coming upwards to the level where um, Malak is. He's going to take two attacks at Malak. First with his blade, a 17. Uh, that is a hit, yes. All right, Malik, you suffer 20 points of damage. Um, all right, 19 of it is slashing, and one of it is cold. <laughs> so that's uh, going to reduce, right. I believe, to 10. Yes. It's just a tiny shiver at the end. Yes, just to rub it in. Okay, <laughs> glad I raged. And the, uh, second, the second attack against you, Malik, with his vicious claw, that is a natural 20. All right. As you sustain 13 points of slashing damage down to six. Ah, ah. <laughs> get it off, get it off. <laughs> and he will step to here. And that ends his turn. Gremel. So the water has risen. Has it risen all the way to the roof? Not quite. There is a there is a little gap between the top of the surging water and the roof of the vaulted chamber. You In can ascend to, to there if you wish. I will look down at my steel defender and cast spider climb on it, and from its wheels all of these spikes will shoot out, and I will it will just take me directly up the wall and I'll and so I'll be there hanging on the ceiling with my pistol out ready to go for the next round. Very nice. Uh, all right, you. how far up? You could go about 20 feet, and that's the ceiling. I will go, you go as all... high as I can, yeah. All right, you are at plus 20 in that case. Um, mm -hmm. Regrettably, I can't put you above the, the water, but uh, that's, that's okay. okay. You'll, you'll imagine that you are, are now breaching above the top of the surging water. Anything else on your turn, Gremel? Uh, as my bonus action, I will dodge, and if I don't give my still defender an action, it also dodges. So both of us taking the dodge action. I think with my, because I have 40 feet of movement in total, I think I will move a little bit closer to the center yeah. uh, with my mm. remaining. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm here, but technically, I'll, I'll go here actually. But technically, I'm 20 feet up from where everyone else is. All right. Oh, nice I might, wa I might awesome. warn you that he's about 12 feet tall. So at <laughs> plus 20 feet, you're maybe not that far above him. I will move to here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Just letting you know. Um, you would also gain temp HP, but you already have quite a I bit. I already have so quite I, a bit. So yeah, I doubt yeah. you're going to do better than that. Kree, it is your turn. Um, I cannot, my Frightened Effect would not end uh, until the end of my turn, so I can't get closer to him. Uh, so I will just look and kind of close my eyes and chuck a boomerang underwater and <laughs> see how All well right. this works. I was Actual assured... Disadvantage. <laughs> I was assured good. that like, it's... This should an... be like quadruple disadvantage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't uh... expect it to come back to me or to hey. even get there, so... Well, you probably plus, should have plus zero. Uh, you probably should have proficiency in it, I guess. So yeah. maybe it, maybe you might be a little bit better than ten. But even with your proficiency, uh, that is going to be a miss. I'm afraid. Yes. <laughs> um, I have a second attack, but oh wait, I have a javelin of lightning. I should have used that first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that could be bad. Hmm. Yeah, that, He's very hmm. dumb. I have an intelligence of oh, eight, no. but I think even that, I'm sure I've used lightning and water before and had a poor result. Um, I'm just going to This move sounds like a fantastic idea. <laughs> a little closer, or no, I can't move closer to them, because uh, he's over there. Uh, 
I'll stay exactly where I am and just hold. All right. The good news is that your frightened condition fades at the end of your turn <sighs> as you recover your willingness to combat this terrible foe. Come on, Cree, get it together. Didn't I tell you that boomerang was great? You're doing great, Cree. <laughs> keep it up. You clearly didn't see what just happened. The bad news is that at the end of your turn, Ansubek is once again going to use a legendary action to perform dreadful vibration. This time, everyone except Gremel is within the water with him as he roars in terrifying challenge. You are in his domain now. I will say, little DM fiat here that Cree, since you just at the end of your turn had this effect removed from you, I will exempt you from this particular role as well. Sure, that's very kind of you. I appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, Saldri in crocodile form, as well as no, that's that's nice it. Just save, Saldri bro. in crocodile form. As Malik, this time the fear does take hold of you. I, I wasn't in the water last time. <laughs> Game changer. Game changer indeed. A Malik swim. Uh, yeah, yes. Saldri, uh, you are you are good to go with that save. That is a wise crocodile. He likes <laughs> the water. Um, Malik, it is now your turn, but you are frightened. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, well, I'll be recklessly frightened, I guess. Uh, so, yes, I, I think I think I will do that. He had no problem hitting me anyway, or critting me. So, and the terror <laughs> is taking hold at this point. More importantly, so he just lashes out with everything he get with everything he's got. So I don't I don't think you can be frightened whilst you're raging, right? No. Nope, or is that is, a, is that is that is that that's a that's a different that's a different kind. I absolutely I absolutely can be and I <laughs> am. And you are. <laughs> so, I like lash out in concept. sheer terror. You know, <laughs> I lash out in sheer terror at this thing <laughs> here. Um, so I cancel out with the various forms of disadvantage I have and advantage to regular roll. Is that a correct straight roll? Uh, yes, yeah, straight roll. Okay. Aha! Hey! Oh, man. Three. All right. Oh, so. There you go. And that that is, is a critical hit against A flurry of self defense. <laughs> yes. I lash out four, and in addition to. This time I do get my. Oh, I get one Twix. more of those, too. Or, no, I don't, because it's not a crit thing, I don't think. Yeah, it is. Okay. Cool. Nice. So uh, I believe I total to 27 points of damage as I slash into him. Not bad. Blurbling under the water, swinging uh, again. Ansubek does not like this as he takes 27 points of damage, but he leans into you roaring in challenge. Uh, this only serves to further exacerbate my fight or flight response. In this case, my fight response. So I swing again with my, with my blade at terrifying close range. I do not like to be this close to the people I am fighting. Uh, and maybe I was a little bit more uh, daunted than I'd like to admit by this. It's ones and twenties, man. Ones and twenties. It's ones and twenties. Then I swing around. The I swing around with my pole arm butt and uh, try to get one last jab into this thing mm -hmm. before uh, he does terrible, terrible things to me. Yeah, 24 hits. All right. I, like, I guess all of these are reckless. Is that is that? Oh, yes, that the, is the yeah. case. Yeah, it's okay. reckless until the end of my turn, and anything yeah. he gets is advantage until the end of my turn. It's not a choice by choice thing. I do another five points of damage to him with the butt end of my spear. Well, all right then. Actually, Nicely that's not done. right. Uh, there should be. Uh, well, yeah, one more point from the net, so it should be six. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, another one. Yes. Everyone counts. Every I'm point not... counts indeed. <laughs> Every point counts indeed. Do you get extra bonus from rage? I don't oh, see yeah. in yeah, your sorry. damage. Rolls. Another three. I can edit that. I'm done adding on Nick's and Nick's. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many more points of damage should I deduct if I've already three. deducted six? Three. 
Okay, yeah, so it so should be nine total. Yes, is that should correct? Be, that's my final answer. Okay. I, I, okay. <laughs> yes. I don't uh, want to shortchange you. I, I don't yep. want to shortchange you. Uh, it's a good. It's a very good round from Malik, actually. Um, somehow the fear has like made him more effective. Um, <laughs> Life is your focus. Uh, anything else on your turn? That is it. All right, Gruck, you are up. Um, I'm gonna be that guy and ask. Having looked at the chat card for Rising Waters, it says that oh. the dude bro is maintaining concentration. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, he does need to take two concentration checks for both of nice. Malik's strikes. Thank you for that reminder. Um, yeah, I was not intending to uh, dodge that. The first strike that you did, Malik, the crit, it was pretty heavy damage. What was that? It was 27 points of damage. 27, so that's a DC 13, I guess? Mm -hmm. Natural 20. Uh, the second one would be a DC 10. Yes. Um, 19. Ooh. Wow. It's going to be a tricky one. All right. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that plus 10 to his con save is... Uh, that's mm, a thing. Yeah. Um, Grok, it is your turn. Okay, so I'm underwater. Does that mean that I cannot use vocal components for spells? Yeah. I, uh, I'll let you burble. Okay. <laughs> you can you can kind of stammer it out. Uh, no, it verbal with the light. Yeah. Um, we're going to verbal uh, toll the dead at on spec. All right. That is a wisdom saving throw. Perhaps not his strongest suit, but he rolls a sixteen. A fails. Uh, he Ooh, has five. taken damage, so that is a. Uh, would that cantrip damage be upscaled? Yeah, it should be at least. Uh, oh, should yeah, it definitely should so, be. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, 2d12. Mm -hmm. Let me fix that. Yeah, so two more d12s on that. Two more? Uh, we're level 9. Oh, yeah, you're level 9. I'm sorry. Yeah, 2d12. Yeah, uh, eight, points of, uh, eight points of necrotic damage to Ansu Beck and another concentration check. Which he passes with flying colors. Pretty. Um. So that was action. Bonus action. Wait, Malik's turn ended, so he has no more frighteningness. That is true. Um. Bonus action. I will be doing absolutely nothing. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's it for me. All right. At the end of your turn. Ansubek dives into the water, spending his remaining legendary actions. He is going to take a hide check. I have um, ten because I have a whip. Uh, I don't know if my opportunity attacks reach ten feet away instead of five feet away. I'm not sure how that rule works actually. Um, um I think reach on your weapon does affect that. So once he moves out of your ten feet, uh, you would be able to whip although i would say let's see you're plus 20 so then plus 15 plus 10 that's where he is he is kind of already out of your range or at at that 10 feet if he was one closer then then you would be in range for that yeah. um but as it is uh, as he breaks away malik or ruck if either of you he he disappears into the water, but as he goes, if you, if you wish to attack, you could. Oh, I absolutely do. Now, Reckless, I think, has to be on your turn, so nope. it would... No? It's until your next turn. All right, very well. A uh, disadvantage from you on that attack, Gruck, because you are underwater. Uh -huh. Nice rolls. Nice rolls all around. All right. Uh, so 19 and 25, both hit. You had to say nice rolls, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so that is actually Saldry is uh, so proud points. of how well you're swimming. <laughs> and then I'm going to... Uh, my Divine Fury Strike is per turn as well. So okay. I do get to add that. Wow. All right. 
Well, I have something Which similar, but it says on run. my turn, so yeah, that won't affect. Wow. No, no, there. Uh, do you get the plus four on your Divine Fury? It or is. is it's from half my Barbarian level. So that is right. a total, and th so that is a total then of nine, seventeen points of damage. Uh, my rage damage isn't adding on to the. All right, two uh, con health. saves for Ansubek. First one, uh, it's a save, and the second one, as he tries to keep the water. Oh, it was on, it was on one there for a minute, but it <laughs> tilted over to a nineteen uh, as he disappears from view. Uh, Saldri, you. Cannot see him, but as a crocodile, you get a strong sense that Ansubek is about 30 feet below you to about due west of your location. Unlike the other party members, his disappearance into this murky water is not, not so much able to evade your sense. So is the pillar in the mi or the platform in the middle? Platform's in the does middle. You'd have to kind down? of swim around. It does seem to go all the way around. down. You'd kind of have to swim around it. Okay. okay. Well, he's gonna, uh, let's see. So we can go diagonally, kind of, and then up into the west, I assume, is where he's going to swim toward. Yeah, that you you have just enough movement if you move about five more feet down that you would be able to get you would be able to get uh, you know to where Ansubek is. So I'm going to move you down. The, oops, not minus twenty five. Adjusting these negative numbers is a little weird. Um, so yes, so you are. I'll expose his token for a second so you can see. Uh, he's kind of right in the water, just below and beneath you. I gotcha. Yeah, so I'm going to try and bite him and hopefully make sure that he stays Ooh, in my mouth no. for a little while. No, a 14 yeah. misses. I'm so sorry. Uh, nope. A 14 just misses. Um, anything else on your turn what? as this giant crocodile? You at least are on his trail and you kind of know where Ansubek right. is headed. I'll try and thrash my tail so that folks know where we are if they can't see him. You see, uh, the rest of you see Saldri in her crocodile form kind of thrashing about and, and making these aggressive maneuvers and you sense that she's on the, the trail of something. Um, all right, top of the round, no lair action because the waters continue to be elevated already, but it is Ansubek's turn. Hmm. All right, he is going to return the challenge, Saldri, as he turn he rises and turns towards you, coming directly to you. He swims, lunges at you with his jaws agape. That is a 18 to hit. Yeah, the 12 <laughs> for the crocodile. Ansubek bites you for 18 points of piercing damage. And additionally, since you are his size or less, you are grappled yes. in his jaws. I got him, guys. <laughs> right where you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he is going to drag you with his remaining movement over to the center pillar, keeping you grasped within his jaws. He will then ascend to where Malak last damaged him, trying to get some revenge on the barbarian who attacked recklessly last time. Blade of the Rushing Waters with advantage. That is a 25 to hit. That hits. You suffer uh, 17, rounded down to eight. Okay. After your rage, he is going to turn towards Gruck and dispatch a claw attack in Gruck's direction. I'm out of boots. 
You are all out of boots, and that is a 21 to hit. That'll hit. You suffer 13 points of slashing damage. Uh, barely scratched the temp HP. We're all good. And with his final movement, five feet, he will drag the crocodile over to this corner, positioning himself. That is the end of his turn. Gremel. So, if I move to here, would I be within 10 feet to use my whip? Yes. Okay, in which case, I'm going to do that. I'm going to cast it a booming blade using my spell sniper feet so that I can do it uh, 10 feet. And I will attempt to whip this guy. All right. I would say this is a melee spell attack underwater, so you would have disadvantage. Sure. As long as the waters remain risen in this way. Ooh, and a 15 not does not do it. Nope. Uh, I will try again. I oh, know I can't. Booming Blade which is just one. So yeah. Uh, bonus action. Uh, disengage, I guess. Yeah. Though my Steel Defender can't disengage, so it could technically strike at my Steel Defender as I move away. All right. It would have disadvantage um, on the attack, though, because of my mounted... I'm trying uh, to think if, it, if I want to use a reaction on this or not. Yeah, he'll use the reaction. Um, he'll use a reaction, and... Uh, so is the... Is the attack against... It would be against the Steel the Defender. The Steel yeah. Defender? Yeah, the however, player. it would have disadvantage because uh, of my mounted... Um, because of the feet. The combatant feet, yeah. All right, we'll give it a go. That is a 28 Ooh. to hit. Ooh. Ouch. The Steel Defender suffers 17 points of damage. Okay. As with a massive clank and a crunch and like this cold crystallization of chilled energy, the blade of the rushing water strikes the steel defender as you are backing away. Anything else on your turn, Gremel? Um, I will, my steel defender will take the dodge action and uh, that's it. Yeah, that's everything. Okay, at the end of your turn, Ansubek uses a legendary action to perform a death roll on Saldri's crocodile form, which is clutched within its jaws. That doesn't sound good. Oh, good. Uh, strength no, saving no, no. throw, Saldri. Strength saving throw. An 18 is not enough. And you suffer 20 points of damage. I am no longer a crocodile. <laughs> All right. The 20 points of damage, it looks like you had 10 temp HP from the end of your turn. Yeah. So that and takes away left. 11, which then overflows a minus nine onto Saldry. Um, okay. But I would say the good news is as you phoom, get much smaller, being Bitten out of this uh, wild shape, there is a moment where the jaws are no longer grasped around you. Um, I will give you this opportunity to make an es to roll the escape DC of the grapple to see if in this moment that you boom, shrink down, you are able to wriggle use out. that as a way to wriggle free. It would be an athletics or acrobatics check, whichever you prefer. Sure. 17. Let me double check. Bless. Oh, you do have bless. Oh. Uh, it does. That would help. It could matter. What? You need a two. Is the escape a... DC is 19. 1d4. 1d4. Numbers, no whammy. Come on, come on. You got it. You got the two. You avoided the one on that, and so you meet He's the so escape. He's done. hiding, right? He, he comes yes. out of the, the crocodile form and just smunches all down and then wriggles to the side and gets out. Uh, you wriggle free desperately as 
Um, Sudbeck like twists and rolls and you feel this like ripping sensation as the animal form is wrenched away from you and you escape with scrapes and bruises. Three, it is your turn. Suddenly not afraid and able to see Ansubek again, he'll look forward, not realizing that he's underwater and she'll go, hey, you still over there. And <laughs> make a move towards Ansubek and while swimming, swimming with a sword fully in one hand, probably slowing him down a little bit. But once he gets there, he'll take two attacks with his long sword. Uh, at disadvantage because we're underwater. Yeah, the fact that oh, you're still the, one. the fact that you're still underwater here is a big frustration. You gotta like you, I, the water's gotta get lowered again. Oh my lord! No, and I'll just be misses. swimming and swinging wildly, uh, and that'll do it for me. Malik. All right, I uh, am HP. Yes, I think so. Three, you got 14 temp HP. Oh, oh my gosh, these temp HP rolls are insane. They are. Oh my good. gosh, so oh, strong. Oh, is that for me? The 14 yeah, or that's is for that? you. Oh, you're Like beautiful. 14 temp HP every round is every like round. Round. Oh, yeah. for every person. That's so, so, Woo. so strong. It, it, it is good. Well, I'm going to blurble out at this guy and say something that sounds like put my noblin down <laughs> and uh, attack him with uh, with everything I have trying to get this awful, awful thing to stop. I am attacking recklessly. All right. So I'm renewing the renewing the madness for another for another go around. And continuing uh, to yeah, channel 32. my fear. <laughs> 32 hits. Yeah. Just hits. All right. For, uh, let's see, 15 points okay. is the uh, slashing portion of that. And then for the Divine Fury Strike, I do another six. I should mention that I reviewed Divine Fury Strike, and it is, in fact, my turn. So I do, in fact, owe this awful crocodile monster eight HP after this transaction is complete. <laughs> I right. do once again apologize for my continued Thank prodery. You. No, we're, we're all playing characters that we have not played outside of this one shot. So yes. uh, your, your <laughs> lack of, of absolute mastery of your character mechanics is more than forgiven. Thank you for all your right. honesty. Yes, um, it is an unfortunate trait as I swing the, again. <laughs> the damage that you, the total damage that you did with that strike that you just made, though, how much? Uh, so that strike was a total of 21 points of damage. All right. Yep. He maintains. Right. Yeah. Okay. I am going to just keep on whacking until the water stops is my plan here. Off I go. Oh, it was on the 20. Uh, 19 hits. All right. Nice. Smash in for another uh, 12 points of damage. All right. And then spin around and whack him with the good old trusty polearm butt. And hopefully he will oh, roll less than two. 18 on his two. <laughs> <laughs> you are also unlucky with these uh, concentration checks. All right. I mean, he does have plus 10 as well. It's yeah, going to be really but, I mean, Yeah, yeah all right. Just, I miss uh, with the butt. Yeah. And uh, I gleefully collect my temp HP. All right. My turn. At temp the HP. end of your turn, he ro roars in challenge, and um, so yeah, so I don't think any of you speak this language. I had all these like great quotes prepared for him to say, but if you don't understand the language that he's speaking in, I don't know, I don't know what. No, the other say, them, say them in his language. For what the language benefit, is it? For the benefit of, uh, well, you don't know, because you don't recognize it. Um, for the Everybody benefit take of... off their headphones so Andrew can talk to the audience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the benefit of, of, chat, of chat, though, he's got all these great one-liners that I was that I was ready to to say. But um, yeah, he, he says, "It's been far too long oh, nice. since blood swirled within these waters." And uh, Grok, it is your turn. Oh, actually, no. At the end of Malik's turn, um, at the end of Malik's turn, he's going to use a dreadful vibration because he's got you all within his water, and so he's going to take advantage of that. I am not in the water, so I won't... Well, yeah, not, not, not Gremel, that's true. Wisdom saves. Saldry, Malik, Gruk. It's two. And, and uh, also three. me. 
Yes. And you do get a plus two anybody within uh, 10 feet of me. Malik, the fear once again sets hold uh, as I'm well as for... I get an 18. Uh, 18 oh, wait, I get meets a plus, the no, saving throw. No, oh, yes. <laughs> 18 meets That's... the saving throw. Um, Grok, it's your turn. Grok is going to... Oh, come on, big guy. You're, you're doing great. You're, you're carving him up. Uh, I want to fairy fire, actually. Okay. Um, nice. We're going to try and position this halfway off the map so that we can not hit our friends. And another natural one. He's going to use a legendary resistance <laughs> to avoid having this fairy fire take hold on him. Ugh, Dang. It's okay. We're bleeding through him. All right. Um, would have been effective. Yeah, it would have been really effective. effective. Yeah. Um, that's kind of it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Saldry, you are just wriggling free of Ansubek's jaws. I am going to try and cast Blight on him. Ooh, nice. If that would have any effect. The dreaded constitution save, though. That is a 29. Half damage, though, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I think so. Is that right? Yeah, half damage. You. Looks That's pretty tasty. Nice. Looks pretty tasty. So <laughs> half damage is going to be... A lot uh, of dice. What is that? 17? 17. All right. Yeah. Um. So he should have to do another constitution saving, or I mean, a concentration. Yeah, um, technically check, he can't right? fail a DC 10, well, but, um, you know, but if he rolled a one, I might, I might, I might say something, but you're going to have to do more than 20 damage to break his concentration because he has that <laughs> plus 10 con mod. Um, that is some GM swagger right there. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. what, what can you do? He's got a 20 constitution and he's proficient yeah. in it. So, uh, you know, what can you, yeah. what can you do? Um, at the top of the round, on his turn, he has been bloodied now and he likes it. Uh, he is going to use his bonus action to enter a primal rage. Turning towards Kree, Ugh. he will attack with his with his bite, and because of his blood frenzy ability, he has advantage on the attack roll. Just what I wanted. That is a twenty-four to hit you, Kree. That'll get me. You suffer. Oh, seven points. Come at me. <laughs> Doesn't even dent your temp HP as he starts to drag you around this way. Uh, Gruck, did you have a free reaction that you wish to use? I uh, sure, sure. I'll take a take a swipe at him with the cleaver. All right. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Damn it. Eighteen. Yeah, eighteen hits. All right. Solid! We took a pinky toe off him. <laughs> uh, having Kree grappled in his jaws, he will then turn his attention to Malak. Um, well, you know what? He's going to take one attack at Malak, and then he'll stay focused on Kree. I think for Malak, he's just going to swipe with the claw. Uh, yeah. That is a 28 <laughs> to hit. That'll As Malik suffers just three points of damage. Uh, Ansubek realizes that Malik is tough meat, and so he turns back towards Kree, and with Kree's upper torso in his jaws, he just comes down with the sword on the back of Kree's grappled form. Uh, 15. Grab he can make no headway. He can make no headway as you brace you are within his jaws, but his attack has missed. Um, let's see here. 
that is his bonus action and action on his turn. Um, he'll take another step over this way to stay a little bit outside of Gremel's whip. And Gremel, it is your turn. I have a question. It says it is resistant to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Would that include from magic weapons? If it's a type of damage, yeah. Uh, we may need to think about the encounter balance here, but as written, yes, it's the same. It functions the same as barbarian rage, which is independent of magic or non-magic. Okay, in which case, uh, I think I'm just gonna have to. I don't really have much else. I'm he just is gonna certainly have to... looking wounded, though. Uh, yeah. The fact that he is bloodied is what triggered his uh, his primal rage. So you've been doing good damage to him. Okay, upside down, hanging from my steel defender. Ah, I'm, gonna I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Clarification, because uh, this may change what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, as with Barbarian Rage, you cannot concentrate while raging. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the waters recede. Okay, nice. And speaking of concentration, I did take a hit, and Bless is concentration. So I have a constitution saving throw. And I only have to beat, I think, a three, but I only just no, barely no. did it, so it could have been problematic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> always ten. Uh, it's always ten, never lower than ten, oh, so yeah. you fail. Yep. And less is gone. Rip. Ooh, ouch. Okay, uh, uh, I am going to do what I was going to do anyway. I'm hanging upside yeah, down. You are now hanging from the, the ceiling, and there is no water beneath you. Yeah. And I will pull out my pistol and aim it and say, Get off my family! And fire twice. Uh, where is my pistol? Okay. So I have the repeating shot infusion, so that means I can ignore the loading property of my pistol. Okay. So the first attack. Ooh, is only an 11. Second attack, however. Oh my god. Is uh, also so bad. 17 is on Subek's armor class. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, oh. So, that's nine points of piercing damage. Um, Down to half. four. Yep. Now, uh, he is within five feet of some of my allies, therefore I also will get my sneak attack damage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is also piercing, I believe. Um, so that's nine halved to uh, four. All right. Not my, not my, not, not Gremmel's, uh... Chipping best, away, but, he is covered yeah. in lacerations and scars and bleeding from numerous wounds, but he seems to be fully invested in the thrill of combat at this moment as he roars out in his strange foreign tongue. You will learn that nothing is stronger than the rushing waters. I don't know, pistol's pretty strong. You did not understand that. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, Stop screaming Three at it us. Is. We're gonna start shouting at him and Goblin then. At the end, yeah. of, at the end of Gremel's turn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, at the end of Gremel's oh, sorry. turn. Bonus action, dodge. My seal defender is also dodging. Okay. At the end of Gremel's turn, death roll. Strength saving throw for you, Kree. Can do. And a plus two to this. Still not. No. Kree, you <laughs> suffer 10 points of piercing damage as Ansubek twists and turns and clamps down with the grapple. So that's all of my temp HP plus three rolling over into normal. Got it. It is your turn now, though, and you are grappled within Ansubek's jaws. I'll take as close to a good breath as I can get it during the roll if I'm hopefully getting flung out of the water a little bit and shout back at him uh, just random orcish insults uh, and swear words and make uh, two swinging attacks as I'm kind of wildly getting swung around. Uh, is this still at disadvantage? I'm guessing I'm still underwater if he's doing a death roll. You're kind of at the surface of the water now, so I would say no, you're not like fully submerged. So uh, you're oh, kind yeah. of like swinging over the surface of the water uh, down at, at Ansubek. 
Still missing on the first attack. But let's see. Come on, come on. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a hit. 23 is a hit. Okay, 23. I will hit. And on this one, I will put a Divine Smite at second level into it, because I want this to All be right. over. All right. Um, so let me roll damage. Ooh. 15 points of slashing damage. And then where is my divine smite there? And I'll do this at second level. Nice. Uh, so 14, 14 points, points of radiant damage, which he does not resist. He is looking pretty wounded. Excellent. Extra D8 at second level. Oh, That's yeah, true. If you used a second features. level slot, it would be a uh, 3D8. One more D8. Get one more D8 in there. Oh, Ooh, not oh, bad. Oh, very nice. worthwhile oh. addition. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> nice. uh, yeah. Anything else on your turn? Uh, no, I can't move because I'm grappled. Uh, I'll just stay here and just hammer on his nose as much as possible. Okay. You and, get uh, a, I think I get a, a truckload of, uh, of temporary HP. Yes. At the end of your turn, he, having sustained these wounds, is going to use the shadow beneath as he submerges and disappears from view. He releases you oh. from his jaws. Does that trigger opportunity attacks or not? Well, actually, may, I guess he could carry you with him. Technically, so yeah, he's gonna he's not gonna release you. He's gonna dive down and drag you down into the depths with him, Kree. Very Would nice. I um, be hidden along with him or depends. I'll say he has disadvantage on his stealth check since he's trying to hide with you in his jaws. Gotcha. Makes it harder to do. Um, yes, opportunity attacks for those that he's retreating away from, which would be Saldri and Malak. Right. Uh, now I'm not disadvantaged because of the water. No, you are not. So I get an actual advantaged attack roll for once. Nice. Yeah, the 23 hits. The 16 does not. I'm afraid, Saldry. Tough one for you. This encounter. Uh, nine points of damage down to four from Malak. And that is the end of Kree's turn. Malik, you see Ansubek pull your ally down underneath the water with him in his jaws. Uh, it is now your turn. He is 15 feet down. He is 15 feet down. Yes, that is correct. You're no longer frightened, right? Because you gained temp HP and stuff since then. I think that I, I had an icon. I had an icon, a status icon on you, but I think it was an old one. OK. Yes. Well, unfortunately, he did not retreat far mm -hmm. enough for Malik's long arms. I, assuming I can see him, uh, he is still within. Uh, he's still in the merge, which means I shouldn't have gotten an opportunity. No, it does. So I did get the opportunity attack. The rules on this are weird. I won't go into it. But yes, <laughs> I should be able to strike down at him from where I am if I can see him. If you have a yeah, if you, with your absurd reach, yes, you yes. can. You can. My uh, absurdly long bugbear. Now arm. the question is whether you can see him. So it does yes. depend on the result of his hide check, which is yes. a straight roll uh, because he has disadvantage from Cree. Uh, what is your passive perception? It is fifteen. You see him. He All rolled right. a twelve. Okay, I reach down into the water and make spear fishing motions as I try to catch dinner for Grok. Uh huh. And uh, is this a straight roll then? I am attacking recklessly. There's lots of water. Yeah, there's lots of water. It's pretty far down, but okay. reckless, I'd say straight roll is okay. probably right. That is not going to do it Ooh, with my first no. attack. Thank but goodness. I will strike out again with my second attack. Even worse. Oh, shave <laughs> uh, You fall in the water. And in a streak of terror, anger, rage, you're not sure, but doesn't sound pretty. He plunges into the water and jumps <laughs> down with his with the butt end of his po of his polearm. All right. In sheer frustration. How far and down? How far down do you descend? Uh, just as much as I need to, which is only five feet. So, right. uh, and I will strike. 
uh, down uh, with my pole arm butt and hoping to do some damage this turn, at least. Uh, 17. 17 is his armor class. All right. So I try to at least do a small chip of damage for uh, five. 11 points. All right. And I get the Divine Fury Strike bonus, which I had not managed to apply before, uh, and do a mighty uh, five points of necrotic damage. Yeah, necrotic is a different is not resisted that same way. So, um, all right. Flashing around, regretting my life decisions. I end my turn. <laughs> he has no legendary actions left, so Gruck, it is your turn. We're gonna ahead and take that 13 temp HP and top yourself off. Yep. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna walk up to the edge of this and peer down into the murky water. Um, my passive is 15 perception. Is that how you yes, see? Yes, you see him. His stealth roll is 12. All right. It's the worst send... he's had all all day so far. He usually has advantage on it because of his underwater camouflage <laughs> feature, which is very handy for someone like Ansubek to have. Um, clever, clever, clever. But you we're see gonna, him. Yeah, he, he's thrashing a... around with Cree in his jaws. Yeah, Cree will be fine. We'll send a guiding bolt at <laughs> Ansubek. We're no, all right, cool. Yeah, an eleven misses. That's, I'm afraid. Um, that's it's probably tough. that. Uh, yeah, Cree's fine. We're we're good. That's it. I'm killing it over here. You're doing great, buddy. <laughs> Is this exactly where I want him? <laughs> Malik may be tough meat, but you're crunchy on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see, Saldri. It is your turn. If you can turn him into an octopus, you are welcome to do so. <laughs> I thought about polymorph, but you know, there is this I, dark mm. stream of blood just like roiling and churning off of Ansubek as he swims through the water, and it is like revealing his position to you as your passive <laughs> perception outstrips his stealth check. You can tell that he's badly Saldri wounded. Good deal. Saldry is gonna try. I uh, kind of resurface and, and hop up on to this uh, platform in the middle because he's going to try and use chill touch to right. hit him. And since a slightly higher level, it'll be a little bit better, hopefully. 16 just misses oh. by one, Amy. I'm so sorry. Uh, Again, your, I'm terrible at this Your one. skeletal hand so reaches out into the water and just today. just misses, just grasps into the cloud of blood trail behind Ansubek. Totally. Anything else on your turn? Um, yeah, so that is a cantrip, and I'm a little worried about my party mates. So as a bonus action, I think I would like to do the healing spirit thing and maybe help them out a little bit so he feels slightly less incompetent. <laughs> All right. Shots fired. So, um, however, I need to put the spirit such that it manages to get, you know, um, I'll just use um, at least a couple of folks who are hurt here. Yeah, I, I'll, I should pull together a token to use for the spirit. For now, I'll just use. Uh, I meant to do that between games. For now, I'll just put it in this little measured template, and you can place it. Well, uh, maybe you can make yourself a little square template wherever you'd like for it to go. Okay. Um, Sorry, I forgot about the speech. I, I, was thinking, like, I think okay. Matt probably has it off, it's but okay. <laughs> um, if not, he can turn it off. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. At the end of Saldry's turn, top of the round. All right. Ansubek. I feel square. Will. With he. Let's see. He will. Surrender, he knows he needs something to turn the tide of this battle. So he is going to surrender his primal rage momentarily. He will, he will relinquish it. He has enough mastery over this in order to control it this way. And that will allow him to 
use his lair action to cause the waters to rise once again. Uh, as the waters come burbling and surging upwards, Ansubek surfaces swiftly, looking for prey that he can use to bring this fight to a close. Dragging Kree along with him, he ascends to your level, Saldri, and he is going to make an attack against you. Um, first with the Blade of the Rushing Waters. A 21. Saldri takes 15 points of damage, followed up by a claw attack against Kree that is in his own jaws. That's all my temp HP. Uh, 28 to hit Kree as he rakes Kree viciously for 13 points of slashing damage. Thank God for that temp HP. And... With his bite, he's already got Kree in his jaws, so he is going to simply use his bite to bite down as hard as he can. That is a 29 to hit Kree. You suffer an additional 14 points of piercing damage. Whew. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> and you are still grappled. Um, sorry, that's all on Ansubek's turn. Uh, he will move to here, f continuing to kind of circle around. Knowing what Malik's reach is, I think he can safely move one more, yep. which he will do. And... Um, Ah, you know what? He would have had advantage on that attack against you, Kree. I'm just gonna see if he. I'm just gonna he see if he crits. 20. Yeah, I'm just gonna go fishing ah, here. No, 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 he does not. Uh, all right. Nice to have that in that one for the next roll you did, though. <laughs> Gremel works that way. Okay, uh, Gremel is going to uh, skid across the across the ceiling. All the roof tiles kind of falling down as the spikes dig into the ceiling until she is directly above uh, Ansubek. And oh, then yeah. she's going to command her steel defender to release itself from the ceiling and she's oh, going okay. to cannonball into the water in a big splash of goblin and metal straight down into Ansubek. Uh, as my bonus action, I will command my steel defender to do its force uh, empowered rend. All right. Uh, on the on the creature. Um, let's see if that hits. Natural <laughs> one. Something goes terribly wrong. Something goes so wrong. As your <laughs> steel defender releases from the ceiling, it's like Oh, an, an old piece of masonry just comes away with it, and it throws the whole balance of it off as this piece of rock is, like, stuck to the bottom of the chair. Instead of dropping as you intend, you go into, like, a side spin, and you just oh. kind of crash into the surface of the water, not dealing any damage. Okay, oh. and then I will, underwater, trying my best, I will get the whip out, and I will cr attempt to booming blade. All right. Uh, well, I have disadvantage, I'm guessing, because I'm using a whip underwater. Whip underwater. I'm, I've got to give you disadvantage yeah, on that one. I see that. I see that. Oh, my. <laughs> Yikes. Oh. Yikes. No. Oh, my. Such a cool <laughs> We've had so many ones. we had so many ones this encounter. It's incredible. It's so a many lot. ones. Oh. Um, uh, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, this was just not a good round at all for Gremel. Uh, you're like tumbling. Like my whip is like tied around my the legs. Whip, yeah, as the as the steel defender continues to kind of in this side spin, the whip actually gets like tangled around it, and you're kind of toppling as you as you slowly slowly sink into the water. That felt good in my head. <laughs> <laughs> There's not so much water on the Albert Rodi on the Albert farm. No. <laughs> um, all right, Cree. Uh, no. At the end of Gremel's turn, death roll, legendary action, Sing strength saving throw, Cree. Plus two to this. Oh, yeah. 
Yes. Oh yes, you save. So I have a quick question. Does your Twilight Sanctuary ability, would that also grant um, temp HP to my uh, Steel Defender as well? Because that is a separate creature. Oh yeah, it totally would. All right, let's let's roll that. Here, I got you. Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> These D6s are blessed. Yeah, an enormous amount of temp HP. Uh, as I finally get a good damage roll on the death roll, which you actually saved this time, so you take nine points of piercing damage, Kree, and it is now your it is now your turn. And I may have some good news for you. If one of those attacks was adv at advantage, would both of them have been at advantage? against me a moment ago yes but that was too long ago at this point that's fair i'm happy to take that um i will try to move my arm out from underneath of uh grimmel's uh steel defender which is on top of me now uh, <laughs> Sorry. and and try to find a way in between spokes and stuff to uh, make a couple slashes uh with my long sword at uh on subek we'll see what happens Disadvantage? Oh, yes, yeah, is this disadvantage. a disadvantage? Yeah, disadvantage. Let's see. Roll number two. Yes, 20, 22 hits. Okay. Nice. I will make damage roll. Terrible. Eight no. points of slashing damage. But I have a second attack, which I will make at disadvantage properly this time. There we go. He, Ansubek reels from your first blow. He's got his jaws around you, but you're just striking him in the head over and over. 23 hits again with your second attack. Hey. Anything else, Matt? I would like to take a swing and find in any time his mouth is open, try to get my blade in between me and the upper part of his body and stab upwards with as much force as I can. Your long sword of sharpness, you find, you wedge it between his jaws. The first strike goes across his eye and that eye goes dark in a cloud of blood. He reels and thrashes and tries to death roll you again. Opening his jaws just for a second, you thrust in with your blade and you meet the roof of his mouth from the inside and your sword sinks in deep. Ansubek roars. Where is it? Ansubek roars and the water burbles and shakes, but the roar fades. And the water goes still. And as it goes still, the water level in the chamber starts to recede. And Ansubek floats Worst bath limply, ever. <laughs> floats limply on the surface of the water as you writhe out of his now slack jaws. Did you see that? I totally killed it with my with my dive bomb technique. <laughs> <laughs> I like that to think was, the force of you me. The force of you crashing onto his head pushed it further down onto my sword. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to try everybody all right? as much as I can to swim up and, and get my arms on any solid surface and pull myself up and just start spewing out salt water from having been underwater getting rolled around for the past, like, 15 seconds. <sighs> that was amazing. Is everyone well, alive? Well done, heroes. The second <laughs> of, of, of Nehebkilat's dread generals lies slain. Um, you fought Ansubek directly within his lair and persevered. I'm very impressed. There's some oh, healing yeah. to spread around, too, from our spirit. Oh, that sounds like delightful. That went all according to plan. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of recover for a little bit on the center island, and then get up and resume whacking the corpse until I'm sure it's not going to get up again. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you're ruining the meat. <laughs> what? Tenderizing, I think thing. some might say. <laughs> I'm going to cast Mending a few times on my Steel Defender, which um, which yeah. heals it up 2d6 for each one, so eventually it'll be at, back at full health. All right. I think Malik and Kree, you two look like you're in the most shit. Uh, you should d divvy out Saldry's Healing Spirit. Yep, that looks pretty good to me right now. Oops. Meanwhile, uh, I'm gonna try and find the most the most meat. Does he have a tail? I feel like 
crocodile tail would go great in a stew. Uh, he certainly has a bit of a sort of prehensile tail. It's not a, it's not like a long crocodile tail. It's yeah. it's sort of the size of a tail that a regular crocodile would have, but on Ansubek, it's a little bit underwhelming. <laughs> yeah, we won't go for that then. We'll find some out, some other meaty meaty section. That I mean, it is still. I guess I would say it is still the size of a regular crocodile's tail. Pretty good. But Ansubek we'll, himself we'll out. certainly weighs probably well over a ton. And um, I live in Florida. Them gator bites are good. <laughs> Not a problem, mm -hmm. Malik. Get him over. Get it over your shoulder. Uh, <laughs> grab grab me a sure tooth while you're down oh, there. No, I can't. I need I need I need the other end to be to be helpful. The sword. Out. The sword might be a good thing to grab. Ooh. Grab me a tooth if you would while you're down there. Just pull one out of your armor there, big guy. <laughs> Ansubek's body starts to kind of sink a little deeper into the water as it starts to kind of slowly drift downwards. Ah, I'm going to try to save it by hauling it onto, onto something if I can. Fish out with my pole arm and try to... All right, you, you, you kind of maybe get him propped onto the, the, the bank over here where he lies slumped Rock against the rock. Kill me if I let him get away. <laughs> is he gonna... Is he leaking that same ichor that, um... The the shadow whisper. Oh, the scorpion it's lady not, was doing. It's not the same, but there is a similar type of process that seems to be happening, where his body is kind of draining into the water, and there's these tendrils of like bloody kind of smoke-like substance that's like draining out of him into the water and dispersing. Uh, I guess I'll have to boil it for twice as long. Yeah. <laughs> I'll drag myself towards the uh, spirit totem that oh, Saldry placed bring around. Three up here. Oh, there I am. Yeah, certainly you can all uh, partake of the healing spirit. Um, either the one that Saldry summoned or the one the... in the flask at your belt. And I don't know how many. D6 there are for the totem, and I'm guessing Malik and I will uh, probably split it at least. The the healing spirit, you can do it, it heals one plus your oh, spellcasting ability modifier. Spellcasting modifier, right. Uh, which is spellcasting DC. Plus four, is that right? That sounds right. Mm -hmm. Total of five, I guess. Yeah, there would be a fair bit of healing to go I'll let around. others who are more and, hurt. Uh, honestly, that temp HP padding is like so hard mm. to overcome for a fight That's like great. this. It's really impressive. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who are wounded, Saldri, Malak, and Kree, um, Saldri, you can figure out a number of times that the spirit would be able to apply itself and you know dole that healing out accordingly. Okay, so Malik, it looks like we've got 16 total that we can, or I guess we have 3, 5, 4, 1, and 3 we can split between us. I don't know how far down you are. I am much better shaped than you are. I think you should probably just take it. Yeah. You're we a, could all do a short man. rest. I got, I got some cooking to do. Uh, this I is got some sleeping to nice do. Of, this is as nice a place as we, <laughs> as we got here, right? Hey, Want to take an hour, maybe eat, eat some lunch. Are, are we supposed to have a glowy guy? Yeah, we should probably find him too. Um, Somebody want the the magi, whose name I know and have written down. <laughs> Abbasi a, a a a is upstairs. Yes. He didn't follow us. He didn't down. come. Back. He didn't. He didn't jump into the water shaft. I think you no. remember saying he was a bad swimmer or something. <laughs> Can I inspect yeah. this uh, tomb whilst uh, Malik's heading up to get the Bessie? Yeah, uh, absolutely. absolutely. Up the, like, it's, it, thing. it's an ornate sarcophagus. Uh, the, t the tomb is of white stone. There are turquoise gold and seal overlays and inlays on the surface of the sarcophagus. Uh, there are canopic jars nested up against it, and there are, are these little flower pots around to kind of adorn the area. It's decorative and, and nice. 
um, in a sort of surprising way. Uh, it seems that An Subek had some, um, you know, had some decorative sensibilities when it came to his own lair. Um, Soldier is definitely going to try and open the jars. There is an ins- say, yeah. There is an inscription uh, on the sarcophagus. I'm not sure if you can understand it, though. What are your languages? Just goblet and common. Uh, Soldier has, yeah. So this seems like Druidic it might no mission infernal. This seems like it might be a just sort of ancient language. So I would say you know it might be sort of common plus a, a sort of history or. Um, you know, maybe common plus a history check in order to decipher some of the the script, um, if that's what you're trying to do. I'll help you out, Grandma. Uh, uh, was that I investigation? Did. Yeah. Okay. History. History. Well, you don't need to investigate because the script is visible. It's more like yeah. a matter of whether you understand it or not. Uh, and you're helping me, yeah? Yeah. We'll share some knowledge together. I, I, you know, I've been alive quite a long time. Maybe I was alive when this was all written. <laughs> I have been alive as long as I know any goblin to have been alive. Which isn't so uh, 18. Really. Yeah, that is, uh, that is sufficient. You learn from the script on the lid of this sarcophagus that here lies Aniki. First light of day. Doesn't see very one. light in here. Yeah. The other one was Uratun, the hidden sentinel. So this one must be another one of those people that was supposed to be keeping this place safe. That mm. uh, the the crocodile man, Ansubek, went and defiled their tomb with his own lair. Well, let's uh, make sure we grab whatever there is before uh, Abassi comes down and we have to have a long discussion about whether it's <laughs> right or wrong to take from the dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, our morals. muscle went. Um, went our muscle went looking for him, but we'll, well try and get it open. Sure, <laughs> just push the two. The, the, try and push the lid open. Uh, you, as a collective, yeah, group, I can use mold earth to help. You, as a collective group, you work to open the slab of this stone sarcophagus, which slowly slides open, and a brilliant gleam of radiant light spills forth from the aperture, flaring and surrounding the room with a warm, basking glow. All of you who are within range of it, let's see, uh, how far away is Cree here? 25 feet? Yeah, it's 30 feet. So, Cree, you and everyone else, you receive... Seven points of healing Ooh. as this warm, suffusing light resonates throughout the chamber, and you all gain inspiration. Ooh. Oh, well, that's nice. That is nice. As the lid slides open, where... you, see, you see the embalmed and ornately wrapped body of Aniki, first light of day, still within her sarcophagus, more or less undisturbed. At her side is a great scepter with a emerald green gemstone at the tip of it. Um, and sort of folded on her chest underneath where her arms are is this ornate uh, embroidered cloak that is folded into a small, neat pile that is sitting on top of her body. Well, we know we need the scepter. And the last guy had a really cool bow, which, by the way, that reminds me, Auntie, you should probably have this bow, because I'm basically yeah, my, never going to use it. My pistol was uh, less effective than it is against owlbears. Yeah, and this, this bow shoots out just light. Right. Well, uh, uh, can I still um, make the noises like it's a gun when I shoot? <laughs> you can do whatever you want to, Auntie. Just, I've got to keep the theme, you know. <laughs> all right. You I'll, can even I'll do twirl it. it around your finger. It's all I'll good. I'll do my best. I'll take it. I want to that pass the waxing present. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, the trans- waxing present. <laughs> I'll transfer that over. Yeah. Perfect. I've done that now. 
Uh, I bet this cloak is going to be useful if we have to fight more of these things. So, might as well take it respectfully. <laughs> Thank you for keeping it's it. A, it it's, it's sewn from a, a beautiful swath of sky blue cloth, and it bears gold and copper thread embroidery with hundreds of what appear to be names, hieroglyphic names, hundreds of them emblazoned and sewn all over the fabric of the cloak. As you turn it over, you see that the back of it bears a sigil uh, emblazoned with a rising sun. Let's uh, close the sarcophagus up and and not tell not tell our friend we'll that this came from it's inside, and instead see that we found it on the outside, so we can remove some of the you know the cognitive dissonance from him wanting to use it. Um, and then I maybe like we'll ask idea. him if he knows any of these names, because I bet they're important names. All right, you take the cloak. Uh, you have not yet identified its properties, but uh, feel free to note that you have that uh, in your inventory, and remind me later. Um, well, I don't even have to rest you, does? but I'm a. Uh... What was that? Sorry. I was, does anybody know what it does, or is only probably uh, a bossy gonna know that? We could probably figure it out. We could probably figure it out. Why don't you try it on? Me? Oh, I would have to get out of my chair. All right. <laughs> You're telling me. The chair is a little bit big for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very tired. It's a nice futon style sleeping arrangement. Mm. <laughs> could fit all three of the smaller goblins on that chair. <laughs> right? Yes. We can wear it like... <laughs> Who's got the scepter? Um, I'll grab the scepter if no one else wants to grab it. Perfect. All right. I'll place that in your inventory. If it has special properties, you're not sure of what they are at this point. Mm-hmm. Um... All right, you've overcome Ansubek. You've retrieved the Scepter of Dawn from the Sepulchre of Dawn. What is next for the group? I am sneaking up this water slide. Uh, I am going to be looking for so Abasi. The, the aperture that is dumping water uh, into the room is about 15 feet up. And then from there, it's steep upwards. It would be very difficult to return the way you came. Possible. Well, uh, the rope of climbing can can head itself up there. I think. No, I think the bear rope in mind climbing. that the rope did not extend all the way. Because at uh, some point, at some point, the rope ended, the and Free had to kind of drop off of. Was it. that because I tied it in knots, though? Because that that was a, I made it from sixty feet to fifty feet. I remember because I can it can tie itself in knots to help with climbing. Well, I, I, the 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 sounds I seem to recall that the rope I... did not extend all the way to the surface of the water at the end of our part one. So I'm mm -hmm. going to say that the the rope is somewhere up there, but it's not something that you can uh, reach from where you are. Okay, uh, we got a door right here, and we we could probably use it. It I bet it returns to the main room like the other one does. Uh, Malik is on a mission. He is trying to climb up. There's a lot of bugbear swearing going on. Uh, All right. Slipping, sliding, <laughs> roll roll me an athletics check terrible. with disadvantage, please. All right. That's not too bad. Uh, a 19. Unfortunately, despite your good roll, you are slipping off the wall and each time you try and leap up and grasp this outlet of rushing water, your hands just can't get purchase, and you time and again go just splashing back into the water below in frustration. Oi, guy! Get your glowing butt down here! We could all uh, stand on each other. <laughs> uh, guys, there's, there's a door <laughs> right <laughs> here. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. I see! <laughs> I'm going to speak my command word to the rope of climbing and it will untie itself from the top and slide down and I will step back in my inventory. 
this rope just comes like shooting out of the tunnel and uh, you know flies in a weird lasso shape in the air before splashing into the water. Uh, Good boy. You Good boy. collect it. If you ever done, we need some. If you're up Malik. there, Abassi, um, we didn't take anything. <laughs> Good one. Uh, Nailed so, it. Uh, uh, I'm going to look around for my javelins that I threw. Is there any chance as the water receded, receded they were retrievable, or are they just gone? Um, I guess a similar situation for my boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> you may next. each you may each roll me an investigation check. Oh great. My specialty. <laughs> However, it will take twenty minutes to perform. I don't uh, care no. about it that much. Yeah, that, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh. I am curious about that big oh, sword no. that was cold that hit me though, that I don't think anybody took. That is still laying limply in Ansubek's clawed hand. Alright, I'll march over to him, snatch it out angrily and uh, toss it in my pack unless something awful happens to me. It is a but... large, it is a large sword. For a normal human, this would be a great sword. For Ansubek, he was wielding it effortlessly in a single heavy hand, but uh, this would be a two-handed sword for for most users. All right, I will, I will snag it. Malik. Nah, not long enough. <laughs> well, I have to get too close. But I, I will carry it in case somebody else wants to use it, and I will fall into line. All right. When, when hey. are we going to take a break? I'm pooped. I was you hard. want to get up to those beds upstairs and take a rest there? I mean, I, that chair was pretty comfy for me. I mean, I guess I could let all of y'all sit in it instead of just me, but... <laughs> We can have a show. Push over some of the a, dead bodies and use them as cushions. Should do an hour, maybe break. <laughs> take a take some take some breathers. Cook some food. Yeah, I got I'd it. like I got it. Here. I, I like the sound of food. I, need. I could go. I for need that. to try. This You've got a fresh cool. crocodile you can cook up, right? Yeah, yeah. I know, right? It's All right, kind of pretty without the giant doom monster in it. Well, let's okay. get back to the let's get back to the beds and then. Take an hour. Things, Poke things out. will attack us. There's always <laughs> things. It'll be fine. Come on, we're just gonna open oh. the door. I'm gonna poke that. out in front of me with the javelin, make sure there's no empty holes that we're gonna go falling through again. It happened right. to me once, Lost never again. Tiles. You I'm staring at the ceiling as we walk down the hallway. Yeah, you you lead cautiously with your weapon, tapping on the floor and tapping on the walls. Uh, looking for traps. Roll me a perception check to see okay. if you discern anything. Strong plus zero to this roll. Nine. <laughs> As you advance along, you're fairly certain you have not yet encountered a trap. <laughs> this place is easy. There, <laughs> I believe okay. so far nothing bad has happened, and therefore nothing will. <laughs> <laughs> Optimistic. The only logical conclusion in my life. you can make. <laughs> Nothing bad has happened? Where have you been? You, you ascend two flights <laughs> of stairs past the mangled and long decomposing forms of priests that whose bodies are strewn throughout the complex. Um, there are many urns lining the walls. The torches magically uh, spark to life as you draw near. And this hallway ascends and winds its way back towards the central area of the tomb where the Dial of Aten is located. Well, hopefully nothing's changed on the other side of this door. Try to push ah. it open. You try and push it open and this door seems sealed. Uh, I'm so At first attempt. Hey, Mal, you want to get up here? Help me uh, push this bad boy open? Oh, yeah. Or maybe it's a pull, actually. I've been tricked by that once before. I'm going to try to <laughs> pull on this thing. <laughs> That's what smart. Do you pull, what do you push? That way you're you're sure. Yeah, that, then we'll get it both ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm pushing if he's pulling. Roll me a strength ability check, both of you, rather than with advantage. Just both of you individually roll. Ooh, 
16 and 15. The door kind of shakes and, and quakes in its moorings a little bit and dust kind of shake, uh, you know, spills forth and the whole thing rattles and doesn't really open. But a moment later from beyond the door, you hear a voice very muffled through the stone that says like, Adventures, is that you? Oh, a guy opened this thing. Are you a trap? Was that? I can't quite hear what he <laughs> a, said. A, if ringing you're res- a ringing resonance rings out, and the door slides open, and you see a bossy standing there, his illuminated staff upheld. The, oh, look, the obelisk, the, the obelisk of the Dial of Atom, is behind him. He beckons you all to come rejoin him at the center of the chamber as you prepare to debrief him on what has happened since you last parted ways. Well, Bassy, that was a that was all that was a crazy encounter, don't you think? Oh wait, no, you weren't there. <laughs> what were you doing? You're that scared of water that you can't come home. Hell was fight a giant crocodile. <laughs> I had to cannonball myself down. <laughs> Abasi looks a little bit bashful, but he looks at you studiously and looks back and forth, and you see the Shabti last sort of standing motionless next to him. And, well, he doesn't really seem fixed. I'll tell you that much. I'll give you more details on that in a minute, but it does seem like Abasi has done a little bit. Um, And, uh, you know, he looks at you and he says, well, I didn't know where that tunnel led, nor did I expect you to hurl yourself down it head first. I thought it perhaps best that we didn't all commit ourselves to some foolish demise in case it led to somewhere that you would never escape from. I'm glad to see you back, however, and I'm eager to hear what you encountered. I sense from your faces that you found some perhaps way forward for us, and I am keen to hear about it. And as you prepare to take a a short rest and to regale Abasi with the tellings of the details of what you've accomplished, that is where we will take a break. And um, we will be back after the break. We'll do a little giveaway for those of you who are hanging out with us in chat. We will continue to explore the vaults of Aten, and um, yeah, we will be back. So we'll take five minutes, then we'll come back, we'll do the giveaway, and then we will be right back with the adventure. So don't go anywhere, and stick with us, and we will be back in just a bit. Uh, We are back to the action where you are all in the central chamber of this tomb known as the Dial of Aten, and um, Abasti, is here, he is being regaled by you about your exploits in defeating Ansubek, the Shadow Beneath. Take us away. So, uh, I got one of these here, scepter thingies. Is this gonna, is this what's gonna help us out? When I pull out the scepter. Oh, that, that must be the scepter of the dawn. Incredible. And look here, and he points to the socket in the floor uh, over sort of right near where you are standing behind you, Gremmel, and he says, it should fit directly into that aperture. Although, don't insert it just yet. Uh, I don't know what might happen. And we need to have all four of the scepters before we attempt the ritual. Righty-ho, and uh, uh, we also um, already had this special cape that we definitely didn't find in here, but we just thought maybe you might be able to tell us what it does. It looks like it's got a bunch of names on the back of it. Uh, maybe probably not names... related to it. <laughs> maybe they don't mean <laughs> something to you. Maybe maybe don't look too close, but like if you've ever heard of a cloak like this, maybe you know what it does. Oh my goodness. Um... This is, could it be? I uh, Let me see this. And he kind of holds it up and he's kind of perusing over the, the names and he, where did you find this? Aniki, it was the folded very light of dawn. Out <sighs> this is incredible. This is an ancient artifact of our order. This was, this was Aniki's herself. 
What an incredible coincidence! <laughs> well, I suppose it makes sense that it was somewhere here within the tomb. I... It's incredible that we've recovered it. This is the Mantle of Names. It was Aniki's prized artifact. What, uh, what Thank did... you. Thank what you for it... returning it to our order. Now, hold Return. on a second. I, I'm well, curious this if it was a... so prized. What, what, was, what was it prized for? For doing? Well, uh... I suppose you should know some of Aniki's story, I, I, I think, in order to understand. Uh, Aniki was one of our greatest leaders, perhaps our, our greatest leader. She was um, visionary and, and smart, but, but inspirational above all. She, she inspired the entire order to greatness, and she, she herself was main, resp responsible for maintaining uh, the ledger, the record of our families, and in her older years, she even played matchmaker to some of the youths in our order, and um, she was a constant source of hope and courage and inspiration and guidance, even in the darkest times that the Order of Aten faced. The legends say that Aniki was both warm-hearted and sharp-tongued, but above all else, she loved stories. She loved to learn them and to tell them and to recount them and... Um, well, so she she had a story of every name, every person in the Order of Aten. She knew their tale, and she could tell it so greatly that they themselves believed that they were legendary. And she knew where all of our lore was kept, and she was just a great chronicler of our order. She it is her legend that in many ways inspired me personally. Anyways, this is the mantle of names, and, and the names that you see sewn on this cloak, they are the members of our order for whom Aniki always had a tale, fresh tell. Sounds, Sounds a lot like beautiful. Aunt Gremmel for our own little band. Uh, well, I mean, yes, I suppose. <laughs> Why the hesitancy, though? <laughs> She's a fantastic storyteller. Yeah. If I had my uh, pipe of remembrance with me, I would tell you all about every single detail of my past. I, however, well, that, that I may don't. be true, but uh, Aniki was the greatest storyteller of of all time, perhaps. I mean, was that one of her stories that said that? Well, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I don't want to diminish your own exploits, but Aniki was. Uh, Once had an owl bear with two heads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not two. I see the resemblance. But we it, should we should take a, a rest. We've been through an ordeal. We're very wet. Uh, so yeah, I, I have a I have I some stuff I need that. to cook. I, I was surprised that you found. I thought that maybe you'd just been sweating a lot. No, it, it, it was not sweat. <laughs> I can no. assure you. And uh, I think a lot was, of this is uh, the concussion. Some of Malik's talking. might be. Definitely no. both. Yeah, this is a lot of the concussions talking. I think I'm going to lay down uh, just right here and take a little bit of a rest, but then I'm two for two for going down shoots and fighting big monsters. I kind of want to go do that a third time at least. <laughs> right. So why does every tomb have a slippy slide entrance? Can't they build like a s door? It's convenience, or... Malik. It's good fun. It's a it water is. park. It, is... You might as well have a good experience before you die, you know? Yeah. Tourist Not, destination. That, that's fair. Malik, how many times have you died before or without having a good experience first? And versus Every the ones where you did. Time. And would you would you rather have the good experience first or the or the not good experience first? It doesn't really matter. Dying sucks. Oh. Oh, oh well. You know what doesn't suck? Sleeping. Ah, uh, looking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's Should take go, a, uh, a rest. Down to the room of rest. Oh, you just do it right here. Right here is nice. Yeah, yes, here. We always keep going somewhere I'm else to take rest. You... Yeah. I, I haven't seen any any perils uh, while I've been here. I was I was working on the shabti a little bit, trying to fix the mechanism in its leg. And last is just kind of standing there motionless. And 
as as Abbas, he says this last just kind of turns over towards him and says, my leg is still not functioning very well. Well, neither uh, is my other leg. Why don't I take a little uh, look at you? You see if I can fix you up. I'm quite good with that kind of thing. I'm going to pull out cooking utensils and sort of start cooking. And I will be snoring in the other corner. I consent to your mm -hmm. assistance, little one. Idaho, come here. Let Annie Graham will have a little look at you. And I'm going to just, I'm going to have a look over and see if there's uh, anything that can be done. Give me a... I'm trying to think. I'm just checking what your tool proficiencies are. It Give me his tools. Tinker's tools check with intelligence as your ability score. Okay. Um, so that would be intelligence plus my proficiency. If you click on the Tinker's tools in your inventory, it will prompt you for that. Or you can oh, just right, yeah. roll there we go. Yeah, manually uh, if you prefer. Ooh. Ooh, it was right there on that 18 for a while. Um, yeah. Maybe if you make them a different color. It's uh, <laughs> it's not really... The the manner of artifice used to create these shabti is foreign to you. You understand some of the techniques as, you know, there are a number of principles that all kinds of artifice have in common, but there is an ancient and strange design of this construct and it is something that you're not quite sure what you'd need in order to fix it. You might need to learn some more or to find a, a reference manual perhaps in order to to understand a bit more about the nature of its construction. Okay. Well, I, I've done what I can, but uh, you're, uh, let's say I'm used to working with triangles and you're more of a square. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you. I am last. Oh, I, I'm Grimmel. <laughs> Where are the others? I th we've been over this. I mean, uh, it's, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I, th I will go find them. Well, that's probably where we'll go next. I'm, I must complete the ritual. They, the slumberers, must awaken. I... To try a little walk back and forth. I want to see how fast you can move. Last uh, kind of tries to take a step forward and he kind of starts to sort of fall over and you oh. reach your hand up and keep him from tipping. And he looks over and says, I am experiencing some difficulty. Where are the others? Oh. Uh, they're they're gonna be right here in the morning, right after we've had a nice long sleep. They'll be they'll be all here. So you just hang tight. And I just turn to the others and go, "Can someone help me with this? <laughs> Driving me crazy." Did Abasi seem to have some success with? I mean, because. Last wouldn't leave the room previously, so if he got him out here, I assume yeah, there's a little bit of help there's that Abasi's been, a, been able to There's offer. been a little bit of success, that's right. And Abasi says, I... This is a... This is a technique beyond me. It was our greatest fabricators that were responsible for creating the Shabti, and they stayed within the vaults. Much of their art has been lost to time. I have done what I can, but perhaps well, I, think, uh... I bet the oh. monolith guy might have messed him up. Is what it sounds like, and I think that's yeah. our next mm -hmm. stop: is to go see. That was where we're every going. one of these other generals has been guarding a tomb, so maybe monolith guys guarding the tomb of whoever designed the Shabti. And maybe that tomb will have something we can use to help fix him. That follows. It's yep. possible. Um, this is uh, Abasi speaking, and he says, um, I 
both can... I, I'm overjoyed, but I, I'm also very afraid. Uh, you've had so much success so far. I can't hardly believe that two of Neheb Kalat's generals have already been subdued. But it just feels like there's still so much to be done, and I, I see the waxing of time, and as he says this, you see the, the dial of sunlight continuing to kind of progress onwards across the wall. Well, it seems like we're making great progress, and I'm, I'm very happy with, with this so far. Um, are you well to press on, or do you need to take a rest? Uh, I'm all tapped out of my magic. I, I could do with a sleep. I know that's going to take up some of our time, but uh, otherwise, we're going to be in serious trouble if we're going underprepared. I think it might be best just to have this little time, meet some of uh, Grook's uh, delicious crocodile stew. I don't Bunkering down for a, for a long one. Nah, I think that'd be worth it. What do you all think? Long, long sleep? Already I laying wanna... down, eyes closing. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> I've been trying to sleep for an hour, Snoring. but y'all keep yapping. Uh huh. Is um is last made of metal? There are metal elements, although metal is not the majority. Uh, it it is not the king. dominant material. Last is primarily made of what seems to be like a, a very, very sturdy kind of fired clay almost, um, mm -hmm. where there are metal inlay. There's also sort of tile and shell and different gemstones uh, and different sort of mm -hmm. bits of like twine and, and cloth. But um, for the most part, he's got these plates that are made of this very hard fired clay harder than you would imagine could be possible. Is there some visible metal on him? So if, I, if I'm, I'm, looking, I'm thinking of the, yeah. if, if we come up against some ones of him who have been controlled or turned somehow, I'm thinking about it. I, I can reprepare my spells after a long rest. I'm thinking of heat metal. Yeah. And I would be able to see, I, see the metal. Can do that, yeah. If there were others like, um, like last, you could imagine that they might have some metallic elements where heat metal could be useful. Okay, cool. As a as an offensive capability. Mm -hmm. I will. Uh, I will just in my chair just look down slightly and have a little bit of food and slowly drift off. Last. Last just kind of stands next to you while you sleep. Disconcerting. <laughs> Anyone else doing anything before attempting a rest? I'd like to look at that cloak, try and figure out what it can do. If, um, if Albasi's alright with that. Yeah, so... With, uh... With what he has described um, to you so far, um, that combined with a bit of sort of experimentation, I think would be enough to to identify the item unless you have a spell that can do it directly. Um, I don't, but I know somebody who does. Well, I think I think with what Abasi described and with some time spent, you know, experimenting with the properties of the item that would be enough to learn. I will place in your inventory the Mantle of Names, which uh, it, it, it is in your inventory now under equipment, if you look at it. It is a cloak of protection, but it, in addition to that, gives you the opportunity to cast the Heroism spell once per day. Targeting themselves or targeting uh, anyone? Targeting anyone, most importantly, this use of heroism does not require concentration. Interesting. Is Malik the only one who can wear it size wise? Uh, 
as a magical item, it will kind of adapt to a degree to the proportions of its wear of, of its of its wear. Um, I think any of you could aspire to use this item. It's a good fit for Malik. Malik, are you interested Awfully in a cloak shiny. that'll help you? Awfully shiny, hard to hide in. Covered in names. Covered in names, but I bet you'll feel more comfortable with it on. I don't know. We could give it to Cree. True. He's shiny. Cree's crunchy on the outside already, though. Look, like a blanket. I just kind of drape it over him as he's sleeping. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> can give it to Cree, that works. <laughs> I will transfer that to Cree's inventory. Um, Cree, you may, if you choose, equip the mantle of names uh, or pass it around to another party member as well. Um, anyone else doing anything uh, noteworthy as you prepare for a rest? I am going to swing the giant sword around that the crocodile yeah. is using. It's pretty cool. It's a little short for you. You prefer something that you can uh, keep at an extreme distance with. Uh, however, I will place it in your inventory. Um, seeing its effects firsthand, you are able to discern its properties pretty easily because you have felt its bite yourself. Uh, this is the Blade of the Rushing Waters. It is a plus one greatsword that deals additional cold damage. Yes. Big ouchie, little coldy. Hmm. I will, um, during my long rest, I'm going to change my infusions over, and I will start plating my whip with some little spikes, metallic spikes that kind of ching, come out and that gives oh. it a plus one, basically. Very nice. cool. Damage rolls. All right. Nice. And it becomes magic. Wicked whip. Wicked whip. Yeah. Um, I think Saldry already opened all the jars in this room, so if there's no jars to further open, he would just lay down. Not there's no remaining jars in this room, although there were n a number of jars in the hallway that you came back from the Sepulchre of Dawn from. If you decide to go on a little bit of an adventure, she'll behave this time. We'll see what's in okay. the next hallway. I think okay. like I'll be sleeping, but any time that you start to move off, I'll be like, "Hey, stop that!" and then fall back to sleep again <laughs> immediately. I'm the sixth seventh for this thing. Well. As you all prepare to take a long rest, I need someone in the party who's feeling particularly fortunate to roll me a d20, please. Dibs. You got it. <laughs> you got Not it. Ian. That's, oh, oh, maybe you should have been Ian. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> maybe Lowe was good. From the perspective of the group, uh, Lowe is actually um, advantageous to you. You're welcome. Um, you you pass the um, you pass the night without incident. Although there are a number of disconcerting scraping sounds uh, from down several hallways, and at one point in the middle of the night, and I'm going to go ahead and advance this eight hours. And I say the middle of the night, although you've kind of you're starting to lose track a little bit of time. I mean, it hasn't been that long that you've been in here, but you're not necessarily resting at normal hours anymore. You're just kind of stuck in this in this tomb. But as the time progresses, onwards, onwards, it is now past midnight, the day of your arrival, and half, more than half of your time has now elapsed. Uh, the night, however, goes without incident, and shortly after midnight, you are all jarred awake, any of you who were still asleep, by the sound of shaking earth and rattling chains. From behind one of the doors, or one of the open The platform moving? The platform sways a little bit, but mm. 
The chains and scraping of stone that you hear seems to be coming from deep within the tomb to the north. Uh-oh. It sounds as if something begins to awaken. I'll something wake up. dangerous. Oh god, what's happening? <clears throat> Maybe we should head uh, a little bit further back towards the entrance. Entrance is shut. I think, I think I we checked. gotta. Yeah, I we, just we gotta so we're deal with them. Generals. I say the best defense is a good offense. Let's go at it. Have we long rested at this the point, or are we still yes. mid long? Yes, mid you have. You may all uh, take a long rest by clicking that on your character sheets. And does the mantle of names, would that replace my current armor, or can I wear that in addition to It's it? a cloak. It's a cloak, so you can wear it in addition to whatever else you have, as long as you take the time to attune to it and have an available attunement slot. Uh, I do. I only have one attuned item. Can I have done that? Or no, I can't attune while I'm sleeping. I have to spend an hour with it. Uh, you, As part of the long rest, you can... There's. You're allowed two hours as part of the long rest where you're not asleep, so I would say you can attune an item as part of that time. Beautiful. I will attune to that, then. You had complained we were we... talking while you were trying to fall asleep, so... Yeah. Well, now there's the a bunch of chains also. rattling, so I don't get to sleep anymore, I guess. The bow also required attunement. Now, Gremmel, in case you... Okay. Uh, I assume overnight I would have attuned to that one. As would the sword, uh, Dan, that Malak has. Sure. It's not plenty easy. I'll do it. Let's head know. up the Stygian monolith and let's see if we can figure out a way to shut them chains up. That's his dog, right? Or is that the bird? Yeah. On, on who bet? Abbasi looks at you and he looks with anxiety towards the north where the chains continue to rattle and he says, this is not good at all. I reckon we're running We've out of time. So late. So little time is left. I, I think we need the other scepters and we need them soon. Which general... Which general should we... Should we try and subdue next? Monolith guy. Monolith guy. Yes, it's the jackal. All right, it Unbet. seems... It seems that you are of like mind in this. I, I should warn you what little our scholars know about the lore of Anubet, but he was one of the first and oldest of Nehebkilat's generals. Not a man, but something from elsewhere, bound within, bound within the structure of a great statue he was, towering over the battlefield. He was Nehebkalat's mightiest general who led her forces in the vanguard of all of her armies. He was unswerving in his loyalty. From the tales that I've heard of Anubet, I... I am scared of what we will find. Hmm. Well, that was encouraging. Let's go! <laughs> I'll go for it. I'll try. <laughs> I'm gonna try well, what, to push what, 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 and pull on this door at the same time because that seemed what, what to work last the, time. The other guy, the other guy, might be easier. No, come on! I just shove you in the uh, back. <laughs> Abasi says, well, "The watchful eye." Was oh, it doesn't matter. They're not gonna listen to me anyway. I mean, it is possible. Nakbel Amun was. Perhaps one of the most fickle of Neheb Kilat's generals, the last to pledge himself to her service, uh, only when it seemed as if she was destined to conquer all. But he's not cowardly, he is simply very cunning. I don't know what to expect with Nekbel Amun. I think he is the least known of all of the generals, the most mysterious. Well, it sounds like maybe if we've taken out all the others, if they uh, see the, the tides a-turning, they might go swimming with us rather than against us. 
worth it. That's about the smartest thing you've ever said. <laughs> That's I'm true. sorry, I blacked out for a second. Did I say something? That I read all the con you wonders. All those concussions, man. I my thoughts are scattered. <laughs> I reckon we should take on the the strongest while we are the strongest. We're we're fresh. We're ready to go. I've got I'm some choice spells with his name on them. Mm. Let's right. do it. Let's hit him while it hurts. And maybe the fight would go better turning towards a bossy if we were all in it. <laughs> if I can't hide, you can't hide. He's gonna Even grab him by the if for the there's neck and put water. him in front of you. I'm yeah, watching you. Drag him with us. Well, uh, I am as much committed to this as you are. I will accompany you. Yes, you will. We must leave the Shabti, though. That Keep an eye on Do we still get last. the impression that he's being genuine? There was some concern last time that maybe he was not on the up and up. Do we still get that impression? Or oh, yeah. is he, does he seem to be... Um, you know, genuine. I, I'm sus. trusting him a bit more than I was last time. I think he seems. I don't know. I don't. Just something about him seems sincere to me. But you may, um, if you wish, make a blind rolled insight check, um, to see if there's anything about Abasi's countenance or behavior that is something that you pick up on. Especially in particular when he talks about last, maybe. None of you get the sense that he is directly trying to deceive you. Although, Grok, you have the sense that maybe he is withholding something. Not necessarily withholding something that is going to lead to your downfall, but just he may not have laid all his cards on the table yet. Okay. All right. Let's go die. Yep, Malik, you come up here, you pull, I'll push. Go! <laughs> Alright, just like last time. <laughs> Abasi strides forward with his scepter and says, I, I can just summon the, the Give light and- Give them a moment. Give them a moment. Okay. <laughs> I just, I, I nudge Abasi and say, just, just wait until it looks like they're pushing real hard and then do it. They need some encouragement. They've had a difficult few days. All right, tell me when. All right. Terrible. Not now. No. All right, as you as you both heave, uh, from behind you, Abasi just kind of <laughs> raises his scepter and passes it back and forth. Uh, uh oh, uh, passes it back and forth over the aperture of the the pathway. And right then, when when uh, Pre and um, Malik, you kind of heave in both directions. Between all of your efforts, the door slides open. <sighs> Classic. Classic push pull. Nice. Good work. High five. <laughs> Abasi just kind of sighs a little bit and <laughs> dusts himself off and takes a step up next to Saldry. Um, oh, tap, tap, tap in front of me as we walk through. Ooh, it's perfect. I was going to say, uh, Saldry will try and provide a little bit of guidance before you walk into the room. Uh, I will tap, tap, tap behind Cree. <laughs> somehow see. still reach farther than Cree can reach. <laughs> What, what are you doing? Hey, stop sneaking up behind me like that. Uh -oh. You approach a crossroads of sorts, a junction where the path leads both left and right. Ahead of you, a great brazier is illuminated with a otherworldly purplish dark flame that sets your heart uh, ill at ease. Mm. The atmosphere in these hallways is gloomy and oppressive, although not with the same sort of darkness that you experienced in Circuitrage's domain. 
there are urns and banners. There are urns on the on the floor along the walls, and there are several little banners bearing sigils of Anubet on the the sides of the wall. Um, and it is quiet, eerily quiet. Well, that is morbidly beautiful, but uh, we should probably avoid this. I don't want to get too close to it. Can I have a little look at this thing and see if there's anything I would be able to uh, glean from just sort of examining, examining it? The uh, it being the brazier. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's hanging from the, the ceiling up at the top of the wall ahead of you. It is metal, it is dark black, like wrought iron, and from within there are these sort of gleaming coals that just emit this smoky purple light. Okay. There is no heat that you can feel. Who wants That's to flip mighty a coin? strange. Up or oh. down? I, I, I thought we I, always went left. I remember I saying always so left. All the bad grindies came from the left. Right. I'll hear we right. always go left and start going right. Okay, so we're going left, right <laughs> on. Perfect. Don't wait, yeah, they're left. Yeah, I oh. guess we know where we're going. Oh, then. Sorry, this way, <laughs> right. My mistake. <clears throat> As you approach, you hear a what a Well, what's your perception? Uh not good. <laughs> Um, I have a 10 wisdom, so I think I just have, uh... You are proficient, though. Let me, let me, uh... I'm not proficient in perception. Oh, I am I proficient in wisdom saving throws. Character but... sheet? I was looking at the wrong character sheet. Yes, you, uh, as you were. Ooh, a door! Another one. There are a number of urns in this passageway. It's very tempting. Ooh. Hmm. You can have one, okay? But that's it. Wisely. Then no more oh, for, gotta, until Christmas. I gotta pick one. <laughs> are you look? are you going to rifle through one of the urns? Yeah, I'm trying to find one. He went right, correct? No. What? No, we went. I correct. We went north. Oh, you did correct course. Yeah, there's there's several. I mean, these these sort of oh, pots, I see, right? Yeah, they're they're along the base of the wall. All the little circular things. There's several of them. I would do the 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 one on the right here. Saldry would definitely start poking at that when he thinks. All right. Are you sure that's the right one? You want the, the container that you rifle through contains a badly damaged brain, lightly yes. removed in pieces from a body as part of a mummification process. Gross. I bet we could eat this. Do you want no. some of this for the stew? It is no. certainly far beyond the expiration date of edibility. I've cooked a lot of things, but I ain't cooking that. <laughs> and that's saying something. <laughs> so I'm seeing light doubles right, of everything. Is there anything on this door y'all see? The door is a thick stone door reinforced. There is no visible adornment. Or well, labeling of any sort. Hmm. Or handle? It all, always go left. This is to the left. It's to the left. Onwards. Oh. All right. We'll you again. open the door. And you open the door into what appears to be a treasure room. However, the gleam of coins and gemstones is secondary to the surge of alarm that you see due to a large figure oh, standing close, close, close. still expectantly uh 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 no 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 <laughs> standing still expectantly in the middle of the room looking at you with glowing purple eyes immediately as you approach as if it has been waiting for this moment for centuries and as you stride into the room, this figure with a creaking kind of groan stands into motion with a heavy scepter in one hand and a wickedly curved kopesh in the other. This is no human. This figure is constructed from heavy plates of sculpted clay with bands of 
metalwork traced throughout its body, uh, covered in ornately embroidered cloth, and the expression on its... Well, I would say the expression, the look of, the, of its expressionless face is completely blank and emotion and emotionless as it stands and starts to move towards you aggressively. Uh-oh. Oh, Always left is a bad choice, y'all. We got to correct this next time. You, you, I don't know, this, I see a bunch of treasure. At this point, uh, I'm going to need to ask you to roll initiative. I think that's fair. Ooh, a big one. <laughs> no deal. Oh, no. Oh, there's Malik. Good job, Malik. Um, this figure, it does not stretch your imagination too far to see the resemblance between it and the Shabti last. It is, however, different in a very significant way. Malik, you see this happening and you're looking over Kree's shoulder and you see this figure kind of as it stands up into an aggressive posture. What would you like to do? Ah, uh, how, how big is this thing? Uh, it's taller than you are. It's probably oh, okay. about how tall are you? Well, how tall are you? I'm eight feet tall. Yeah, it's probably about 10 feet tall. Oh, yeah, that's not good. All right. So what I would like to do is I will go and uh, burst forth in, in rage and terror and, uh, well, in rage. And I am going to, right where I am with my ridiculous reach, uh, oh, actually, no, I do need to step forward one square. Well, it's interesting because as you're thinking about this and preparing to act, the figure stands and as the figure reaches its full height, before you even act, its visage darkens and its eyes flare. Uh -oh. eh. And you suddenly see it go stock still for a moment as it beholds you. And as you are unlimbering your halberd and preparing to strike, there is a thunderous booming voice that resonates throughout the hallways. Um, I don't know if any of you understand this. Uh, let me check your languages again. It's not speaking common? Come it on. is not speaking common. Or oh, goblin? Definitely orc. <laughs> not yeah, goblin. Definitely. Well, we're not very linguistically inclined. You are all <laughs> not very linguistically inclined. Um, there is a deep rumbling voice that, for the benefit of the audience, uh, <laughs> but none of you understand this, uh, rumbles out and says, You arrive at last. But it just sounds like a deep, rumbling, guttural nothingness to you. Now it, it is it's... your turn, but as you start to act and after this voice begins rumbling, most importantly, you start to hear something else. Uh oh. I'm not picking it up on my footsteps end. coming. Mid footsteps, and they're large. Oh, there it is. And it's not moving. Great. Uh, that's a problem. Yep. Okay. You look quickly. Yep. So I'm going to step forward. I guess. Oh mm -hmm. man. Kree is kind of in my way. I can't... My reach is long, but it isn't quite 20 feet long. You can get past him, or you I can squeeze can on top of his... Him. Or you can <laughs> squeeze on top of his face. 
All right. Uh, does it look like he would be able to cover the entrance to the door with his sword from his enormous size, or can I not tell that until I see him swinging? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but he certainly uh, looks like he could cleave at anyone who's coming through the door. Okay. Well, then, shoot. I guess I'm going to go for it. I'm going to... Uh, I've raged. I'm going to go up to here, and I am going to uh, attack him with my uh, with my with my halberd. I'm closer than I'd like to be. All right. Okay. I don't know what just happened, but um, I, I think I'm not going to attack recklessly because I don't know what's going on at this point in time. Okay. Uh, 22 hits. Okay. And so I smash into him for 17 points of damage. All right, 17 points of damage. Oh, Very plus, nice. Plus my some necrotic damage, perhaps. Uh, six necrotic damage. All right. Does that require you to be raging? I am raging. You are raging. Okay. Yes. Uh, then that is, is that a total nice? of 23 points of damage. I need you, as you do this, to please make a constitution saving throw. That's not fair. All right. And I do have a plus two because I am very close to my friend. Oh, yes. Nice. You feel this sense of awe at this statue and its this construct and its presence that for a moment seemed to just kind of cause your breath to catch, but you muster the courage and, and the fortitude to carve through it and you deal this heavy blow. All right. The footsteps I'm... continue. Yeah, no, don't like this. Got to dispatch this quickly. Continuing attack. <laughs> All right. What is that thing behind me? 23 hits. All right. And I deal. Oof. Nice. Ooh. Wow. 18. Very nice. And one last slash with the butt of the pole arm. I guess they don't slash. One last bonk. <laughs> There we go. Oh, yeah, I know no. I'm like, I was no, uh, no. glancing nervously over my shoulder for the footsteps by that point in time. And, you uh, looked and back. Point, uh, distracted. You looked back, and the footsteps, uh, they seem to be approaching, although they have not gotten, as far as you can tell, that much closer. It's a little bit difficult to hear where they're coming from. They are slow and steady, implacable. That's all I got. The figure rises to its full height and oh, strides no. for you, to uh, towards you, rather. Uh, right. It will make an attack uh, against you. Um... Malik, did you attack recklessly? I did not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh... The first one with its sword, it leans in to strike at you. 19 to hit. It does it. All right, you suffer 14 points of slashing damage. Halved to seven. And as it carves at you with one hand, it reaches out with its long scepter and reaches over top of you to slam down on Kree with its scepter. Uh, that is a critical hit. Ooh. Um, all right, that is not going to be very nice. Kree, you suffer. Oh, no. No, no, no. 48 oh, points God. of damage as the oh. curved tip of this scepter rips into you and this venomous, is awful it, uh... essence courses through your body. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. Ow. Mm. Ouch. Yes, it's not friendly. That is its turn. Gremel. So, do we all hear these footsteps? You all hear the footsteps, yes. Okay. And do I think they're coming from, like, this passage to the northeast? Roll me a perception check. Yeah, I won't make this count as your action. That will or won't be my action. It will not be your action. Okay. Uh, I'll do this. Okay. 
Um, you get the sense that they might be more to the south, but perhaps equidistant could could be either. Okay, slightly worrying. Okay, this big creature, it looks a bit like a... Uh, I'm going to move to it here. It look, I'm guessing it looks like there's some metal on it as well. Is it like a construct? It does sort? seem that it does seem to be. Okay, I will cast heat metal on it. All right. There is no save, if I recall. It simply happens. Is that correct? It does, yeah. Yep. All right, roll your damage. Three. All right. Three. Uh, it is now a searing hot, angry statue. You're not sure if this has made things better or worse. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, and then I will use the uh, some more of my movement to head to. So that's five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25, 30, 35, 40. I'll use my bonus action to dash. 45, 50. 55. And then I'll start moving back. I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. 55. No, no, no. I'll, no, I'll push on 60. Huh. 65. Where's grandma going? Yeah, she just fucking yeeted herself away. <laughs> so jealous. 70. <laughs> 75. 80. I'm, I'm, I'm moving back. <laughs> All right, so your movement is 40 feet normally. Like, and, and I, I zoom past okay. the cash. Oh, I, I, ah, I'm not going to go back again. I <laughs> see another one. <laughs> All right. Um, is that the end of your turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, at the end of your turn, you hear this booming voice resonating through the corridors. You can't quite pin down its location, but it seems so that something is coming for you, Gruck. Scooch it up. One, we are going to throw a uh, Toll the Dead at the Construct. Actually, does that specifically say it doesn't have any effect on constructs? No. Okay. Yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> All right. Wisdom saving throw. That is oh, an extra one. It also needs to make a um, a constitution save because it, it can't drop its own body. So it needs to make a con save to see if it has disadvantage on its um, right. attacks. And ability ah, checks the next round. All right. The heat metal. Thank you. Um, it passes that. Um, okay. One thing I forgot to do, which I should have done, is that, uh, Gremel, since you're making me roll a save that I forgot to make, I need you to roll a save that you forgot to make. I need you to roll a ah. constitution saving throw, and same for Gruck. That's not good. Not good. Remember, right. you have inspiration. Gremel. Oh, I do. I'm going to use my inspiration for this. Okay, go ahead and re-roll. Hey. Hey, Ew! natural 20. That's All right. Call. Very nice. Um... All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, Gruck. Uh, you used three damage. Toll the Dead. Uh, it did three damage. All right. Anything else on your turn? I'm gonna move up here, and that's it. All right, Saldry. So I think Saldry is unhappy with all the weird noises his friends are making. <laughs> And he's going to get so he can see what's in this room and try and cast a uh, blight on this creature. All right. Uh, 
hopefully. It oh, right, that's the thing I need to do. Sorry, I was waiting for something, but that's in fact a save yeah, that I okay. need to make. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that is a failure. It's okay, woo! Um, awesome. How, however, uh -oh. I'm so sorry. This spell has no effect on undead or constructs. Oh, you just said that, <laughs> Andrew. Uh, the other one, mother. Soldier, I'm so sorry. Okay. Your instinct, your instinct uh, was good. You no, try it's and my just, bad. You I, try and just seize the lifeblood, the essence of this creature, and then only too late you realize. Wait a minute. There's, there's no effect. I'm gonna go ahead and keep. No, because Amy wasn't paying close enough attention. Okay, Salgar's gonna come over here for moral support. <laughs> All right. Um, it is now Nesser Sefet's turn. Uh, <laughs> yes, he will move 30 feet and turn around the corner and strike at Gremel from behind. Okay then! Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, my uh, Steel Defender will impose disadvantage using its uh, reaction to deflect attack, which uh, uh, means is if it's it attacking... The, is it the uh, next I, attack or the the all all attacks? Um, One. Just, just the One. next attack. Okay, there's two attacks coming at you. I know which order they're going to be. Do you want to use it on the first one or the second one? Oh well, I don't know which is gonna be worst. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use this little. I sense the second one's gonna be worse, so I'm gonna wait for the second one. All right, you should have used it on the first one. Oh, <laughs> he brings his DM. scepter down. A fourteen oh, to hit. Oh, oh, oh. That that misses. A uh, fourteen misses. All right, well he follows it no. up with a, a slash from the kopesh with disadvantage. Uh, but that is a twenty-two. That does hit. Um, you suffer. 12 points of damage from Nekanab. Oh, and um, I need to make a con save for my concentration on my heat metal. Oh, oops. That is actually. Mm. I got their names backwards. That is Nesser Sefet. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm still concentrating on heat metal. All right, very good. Uh, that is its turn abasi strides forward and looks oh, sorry. i can use my reaction at the end of my turn to um uh use nimble escape okay it means i can disengage when a creature ends its turn within five feet of me uh no sorry that's not that's the wrong thing no no that's not the right ability where is it reaction skirmisher that's the one I move up to half my speed as a reaction when the enemy ends its turn within five feet of me ah very nice all right you may move up to 20 feet then and that's my reaction, and the, the thing before was the chairs, uh, the steel defender's reaction, so they're two, two separate things. So tricky, so tricky, <laughs> yeah. artificers. All right, Abasi strides forward and he says, what is this, what is that sound? Uh, this does not look good. Uh, Kree, are you wounded? Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, Quite well, in that case, unfortunately. he... He will, um, well, he doesn't really see the enemy and he doesn't have, uh, it's kind of a, it's, it's not great, but he's gonna, he'll cast Healing Word on you at level two with a bonus action. Ooh. Uh, that is seven points of healing, Kree. I'll take it, thank you. And with his action, Abasi will, uh, start concentrating on a sacred flame in case anything comes into view that he can use it against. Kree, it's your turn. Now, can I get towards this? Can I get close enough to make a melee attack or can I not? You would have to room? squeeze into the space that, um, that Malik is occupying, which you can do, but if you squeeze into the same space, your attacks would have disadvantage. Mm. I'm gonna start taking out my sword and then uh no i'm not gonna be able to get there and grab my lightning javelin uh, or my javelin of lightning and i'll speak word to it and it'll crack with uh uh lightning and i will send it in its direction do 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 i can only hit one thing with it um 
Let's see. If I want to get rid of... Oh, oh terrible. No. <laughs> Seven misses. Malik is just too gangly and in the way. Uh, um, it looks like they do still have to make a uh, dexterity saving throw of 13, so not a big correct. challenge. Not the target. Anyone between you and the target. Oh, okay. Not Well, that's Malik then, I'm afraid. Wait, what? <laughs> I didn't read that properly. I also have an intelligence of eight. My apologies. <laughs> Malik, uh, Kree has just hurled this javelin of lightning right past you, and the whole area is cr crackling with electricity. Uh, all right. I, I, I yell, Eep! The other one uh, is electric. What? And uh, I will make... Now, does this count as an attack I can see? I'm technically facing the other... I am looking around because uh, I you, hear things behind Yes, me. Okay. yes, it's, it's, you have a 360-degree arc right. of perception. All right, I have advantage due to danger sense, a.k.a. ally yeah. sense. Yeah, you um, get a plus two and... from me. <laughs> well, that, that's good. So that All was right, actually a 17. You're okay. Yeah, you're okay. I knew you'd be fine. Uh, give him the half damage, though, because he does take <laughs> half. <laughs> Okay. Zap. Let me see. Is this the right? Damn this is it, like the know. knife throwing trick gone wrong. Yeah, this is definitely uh, a bit of unfortunate friendly fire as as uh, as Malik takes seven points of lightning damage. Why? I should have read this better. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> I didn't remember How what they told me this did. <laughs> I'll fix has that this, up for uh, you has, right away. Has has this thing taken its turn again since I did my? Uh, oh, no, no, mind. Mind. Not yet. It's coming up Ignore on me. initiative twelve. Ignore me. Yeah, it's my. I was thinking it's on its turn, but it's my bonus action to do the email. Never mind. Uh, top of the round. Uh, well, it's not yet initiative twenty because this creature is going to move. Wait, what? Now? Use you? Uh, all right, now it is initiative 20, and boom! These arcs of vision illuminate out from all of the Ushabti blanketing the area, and this voice booms out resonantly throughout the entire uh, sepulcher of dusk, and it says, The pitiful servants of Aten are mine now. What hope do you think you have? Malik, it is your turn. Oh, okay. I was expecting to have to do some rolling for that thing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I spare a moment to yell vociferously over my back. It's a, what, what, why, why? I already apologized. And then turn around, <laughs> and, turn around and, uh, and attack. And there's this moment where it looks like I, I before I recognize it's just my idiot friend. And then I turn back around <laughs> and I smash at the, uh, at this thing in front of me. I assume this is not the first time something this nature has happened, nor will it be the last. All right. Break out with my halberd at the close range. Um, and I think I am going to go into reckless mode at this point in time. Uh, I feel like I need to end this as quickly as possible. I will probably pay for oh, this. Oh, all right. Ooh, uh, nice. Working in my, Natural in my 20 at the moment. So I strike out hard we a little bit powered by the extra force of the adrenaline of taking damage in an unexpected way and uh deal not not as much as i could 17 but... not bad oh and then there's the necrotic portion of that for another right. seven and i will smash continue my assault maybe not i'm afraid not all right once more with the butt of the pole arm even with advantage. No, Ooh. yes. That's another crit. <laughs> there we go. Just farming for crits over here. And yeah, I yeah. am. Yeah. 17 damage with a pole arm butt? That doesn't seem <laughs> right at all. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I don't know. I don't Finally know. Finally connected. That, that, uh, that doesn't seem like an appropriate amount of damage. <laughs> 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 all right. Th there we go. The the pole, the butt of the pole arm was just as effective as the front end in my panic. And uh, I, I say, why is he still standing? Why is he still standing? <laughs> and I'll end my turn. As the Ushabti gazes on you and takes your vicious blow, it there's this resonant voice that erupts from its 
mouth, but it's the voice that you heard before, and it says, I see you now. Was that was that in common? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're, all you all are hearing is just a bunch of gibberish because you okay. didn't bother taking any languages, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Um, why well, use word when sword oh, point? <laughs> yeah, why well, use word? Uh, uh, Look who's on the initiative order now. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I didn't, no, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Uh, that was not supposed to be revealed. Um, <laughs> although it's not much of a secret. Neck and Ab in this room is going to... Hmm. Well, he'll try and make uh, Malik pay for his insolence. <laughs> he has disadvantage on his attacks because of... Oh, that should have been a straight roll then. Uh, the first result was an 8, which would have been a 17 to hit. A 17 still does it. All right. Um, 25. Uh, although... You're raging. Let's see. So it's 13 bludgeoning down to 6, and then 12 poison not reduced. So 18 okay. points of damage to you, sir. Um, the disadvantage that Nekanab has on his attacks, is it all of them or just just one? Or Was that from Heat Metal? I'm trying to remind me what uh, that disadvantage it's is It's all, all attacks. That's from heat metal. He did. He did make his metal. saving throw, though. Oh, he did he make his save? He, oh, sorry. Yeah, he sorry, I'm yeah. misremembering. Okay, so, actually, no. Sorry. Making so the he should only means that we can drop it, but yeah. he can't drop it. Oh yeah, no, because okay. the, so he did, the, the saving throw. He, he, he didn't need to make the save actually, because yeah, it's uh, you make a save just to um, keep hold of an object. But if you can't keep, because it's part of him. All right. Yeah, uh, he can't. He can't drop himself at this point. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he made the save, so he isn't forced to drop the object. So I, I think in this case, he doesn't have disadvantage. I uh, don't think be... that's uh, so. It says, if the creature is holding or wearing the object and takes damage from it, the creature must succeed on a Constitution saving throw or drop the object if it can. Which he if did it, succeed. If it, and if it he... doesn't drop. The ob but, he, but he can't, that's the point, if, if it can. So if it doesn't drop the ob object, it has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. It is like really wearing strong. armor, you can't take it off. I rule this differently. I mean, people okay. out in internet land can overrule me, yeah, but enough. he made the saving throw, so he does not have the disadvantage. Okay. If he failed the saving throw, he would have the disadvantage. But he made his saving throw, so he does not. That's that's my okay. ruling on this one. But I'm probably wrong, but uh, that's that's my ruling. Um, he uh, makes his first attack. He will make his second attack again, also at um, Malak. Oh, that's a crit in return for you, sir. Uh, this one's just—it's just physical. It's just physical damage, though. So it's only six. It's only six to you. Oh, hurts. Uh, okay. Not so much. Um, he will take a step over this way to get out of the line of sight of the others, and uh, that is his turn. Gremel. Uh One thing before I take my turn, I don't know how we want to rule this with the fact that I'm mounted on my Steel Defender, but when I used uh, my reaction to disengage back, because we're two separate creatures, I don't know whether technically it would have got an attack against the Steel uh, Defender. The Steel Defender did not disengage. You disengaged. So, I think that's yeah. true. So, so, um, so, the so it would defender. have. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll. He has I'll disadvantage just, because of my feet. I'll make a, a measly Kopesh attack against you and see if the. the yeah, it doesn't. I think I think 12, 12 does not nah, do it. That, so, that misses. Thank you for your honesty. It is your turn. Okay, uh, I'm going to um, move 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, and I should be within. Am I within 10 feet range now? Uh, uh, yes, will, you are around the corner and attempt to whip using booming blade all right so let's see if i can actually hit with the whip uh, okay uh, inventory whip plus one now oh uh, it was on 18 <laughs> and then it just just yeah, went I'm afraid i'm afraid it misses 
as the whip strikes the stonework of the wall just in front of this Ushabti. Well, I tried! <laughs> I'll just head back again. Uh, so that's 30 feet. Uh, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move to here with my full 40 feet, and then I'll, with my bonus action, I will do my heat metal again. Okay. Um, which should deal another. Let's see, if I can find this when I cast the spell. Earlier on, you, I'll, I'll, one thing yeah. you can do that's a little bit convenient is if you right-click the heat metal card in chat, you can oh, pop I see it out it. so that you can uh, keep it handy. Sweet, I'll do that. So it takes an additional six points of fire damage, and I guess it would make the, the con save again. I would assume so, yes. Uh, we shall see if it can maintain its concentration. Uh, it does have magic resistance, so I assume that this is a magical effect. I did mm -hmm. not apply that earlier. Uh, but that is just an 11. Yeah. So that constitution save fails, in which case it will have disadvantage on its checks for the next turn. Sweet. Uh, nicely done, Gremel. Anything else on your turn? Nope, that's me done. My, all right, my yeah, that's all. That's Grok, awesome. you are up. All right, first things first. Channel Divinity, Twilight Sanctuary. I sense the shit's going down. We're gonna make sure that we get that up and running. Um, do you want me to put down a measured template? It, I think we can just measure to see if anyone is particularly within 30 feet of you at the time that they they take their turn. Uh, I don't good. think we necessarily need the template. Um, so, all right. at the start of this, nothing really happens. But it will happen on your ally's turn, correct? Right. So that was uh, action. Bonus action, we're going to spiritual weapon. And we're going to plonk that down inside the room. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Can you throw down a spiritual weapon for me? Oh yeah, absolutely. Two? What's the space? Your cleaver comes out and yep. you fling it into the room. All right, so attack first. 15? Uh, 15 misses. The hardened right. exterior shell of the Sushabti, it is pretty heavily armored. All right, um, I I didn't like being stared at, so I'm going to try and get cover from that. <laughs> uh, can I slink into this little corner here? Yeah, we'll sure. Go. Yeah, you're you're kind of lurking underneath the eaves of the wall. Perfect. That's it for me. Yeah, that's a valid space for you to be in. Uh, Saldri, at the start of your turn, the Ushabti can now see you. <clears throat> and so it is going to impose its dynastic aura. Uh, you are within range of it, so I need you to make a constitution saving throw. You succeed. Well done. Ooh. You are able to act normally. Well, that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> Aldry feels clarity. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, I am going to. Saldry sees that there are these these stomping feet coming, and something that scared scared the hell out of Auntie. So he is going to lay down this um, spike growth here, and I'm going to try and do it so that I can see, so that it's like that. Did I put that in the right place? I can't quite see. Yeah, let me, I'll make it a different color I want it to so cover... it's a little bit more vibrant. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Yes. So nice. it should be in it, and then it should not have um, Gremel uh, in there um, either, okay. though, so that the whole hallway is then covered by that. Gotcha, yeah. So does this apply and... immediately, or it says when a creature moves into or within? Um, right. So I guess that happens so on the enemy's turn. When... Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's at disadvantage because of the previous thing. All right. Very nice. Um... Okay. Yeah, that's very cool. That's a cool ability. Uh, anything else on your turn, Saldry? I think he's good. Um... That was the action. I don't have any useful bonus actions right now. Okay. Um, 
Nessar Safet. Uh, the ruling of the spike growth spell is such that the target does not necessarily... It was camouflage, so it doesn't know that it's a thing. Um, so it will make a perception check to try and see if it can discern that it is in a hazardous area. Um, is that also at disadvantage because of the... Oh, actually, now wait a minute. It says any creature that can't see the area at the time the spell is cast. Yep. So does that mean that if it mm. can see the area at the time the spell is cast, it is aware that it is dangerous? Yes. Probably is aware okay. that it's dangerous, yeah. Well, that only helps so much because it is still like right in the middle of it. Yep. Uh, it is going to look at this dangerous area and obeying the will of its master, it is going to retreat into... Uh, the room. It moved 10 feet, so it takes uh, 44 piercing damage. Nice. Saldry, if you want to roll that for me, please. That's a really good spell. Yeah. So, uh, if it's a situational bonus, it would be plus two, right? Oh, no, 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 not a situational bonus. It's just normal, but... Uh, Yeah, you can roll two more, though, because I moved moved twice, yeah, so another 2d4. Um... So 10 points of piercing damage to the Ushabti. Um, It will... All right, that's it for its turn. Abasi um, will... Saldry, sorry. Take um, healing. Saldry, bonus HP. Ah, interesting. So as the healing flows into Saldry, um, there is this siphoning effect as... Uh, seven points of temporary hit points go to Saldry, and seven points are sucked into the chamber and seem to infuse health into Nekanab. That's Cheater. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, Hacks. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Abasi sees this happen and he says, No, they are leeching your life force. And he ter- steps around the corner to look into the chamber, and he will use Sacred Flame. Um, the Ushabti succeeds, however. Kree, it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to look around and think, ah, oh, man, I've been messing it up today. Ex- excuse me. Um, pardon me. <laughs> I'm going to push my way past Malak. You squeeze I- past Malak, yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Cleaver. Um and I'm going to take out my sword and be like, back to classics, and start making a couple attacks with my longsword. Now, does, uh, this is a contract. I'm guessing, since it is a statue, it does not also count as an object. It is not an object, no. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is an Constru- anime. It is a, is a construct. It is a creature. Yeah. Nice try, though. I was uh, hopeful. 24 hits. Okay. Take a swing. Not great. Uh but 10 points of damage on the first attack, and then That's I'll good. pull back with another uh, swing down on it. Let's see. Uh, 15. 15 does not hit. Okay. Its armor is too tough for that. Uh, then I will clink against it and end my turn. All right, Ahmed is, is going to do something on his turn, but not that you're aware of. Malik, <laughs> it is your turn. <laughs> Uh, okay, I don't like these additional things appearing in the Actually, initiative. no, it is not on your it is not your turn yet because on initiative uh, twenty, although it is pretty meaningless at this point, the uh, Ushabti's cone of vision springs to light and he kind of surveys the scene. Um, but none of you are really all that visible to an Ushabti at the moment, and so there is a pause and then there is a voice that booms out uh, that sounds frustrated and impatient. Mm. Malik, now it is your turn. I was hoping they'd just shut down. <laughs> oh, they're gone. Right. <laughs> we're, well, we're going to work on the whole shutdown thing. We're, we're, we're going to try on that. I'm going to recklessly try to shut this thing down, as it yeah. turns out. <laughs> so we will unleash a flurry of construct bashing blows. Yeah, 26 hits. Right. So this does... With, uh... 16 points of damage. How would you like to do this? With a As you single destroy the first of the Ushabti. Resounding crunch. So I'm looking increasingly nervous and I just 
decide to finish this thing and just bring it down hard on top of the thing's ten foot skull, and uh, then step back. The the bust, uh, the upper torso and head of the Ushabti, the clay just shatters, and there's this explosion of energy essence of the binding that was keeping this construct animated as it bursts into like different chunks of its its construction all over the floor of this room and it kind of explodes away and as this happened there is a bursting flash of light and this booming voice resonates throughout the chamber as it says what does it say well you don't understand it either way so i can say <laughs> anything but uh, the voice says <sighs> I do not need your useless shanty to win this battle. All right. And I'm going to charge off to the next target. Uh, actually, I guess I have no idea that that spike growth is there. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> I think I'm about to take we, friendly fire we again. Can yell out. As, I mean, as you can use no, a no, free no. action to yell. Watch out for the spikes. Don't go there. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pull up short, I guess, to here. I was going to say, or go around, yeah. Well, yeah, this is, this is where I end my turn, I suppose, in that case. Uh, right. Looking for additional targets. That works. You want to put Let's... this 11 temp HP on both Kree and Malik? Oop. Oh, I didn't realize we still had that going. Uh, yes, that's that's correct. Um, I've got some of that temp sucked away. at the end of my turn, or was that recent? Uh, it was recent. Okay. The footsteps resume um, as Anubet, who you now realize is coming very close. Um, Anubet will... Oh, shoot. Actually, you know what? He's going to do something else. He's going to take a step backwards. Uh, Saldry, roll me 2d4, please. Mm-hmm. The footsteps slow and grow patient and then cease for a moment. You sense there is a perhaps bit of a stalemate in the tide of battle for the time being. Gremel. I'm going to make that stalemate even uh, more stale. I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30, 35, 40, and I'm going to cast Grease on the floor in this corner. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll place it. Uh, actually, I'll make sure that I don't put myself in it um, as I go. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um... All right, very good, Gremel. Um, and then I'll use my my uh, bonus action to. In fact, I'll use my yeah. No, I'll use my bonus action to to get head back to my my pals. Okay, Gruck. Don't forget, you gain ten HP. Yep. As always. Take the eleven. <laughs> Wait. <clears throat> um. Gruck is Gruck is Gruck. Um, I'm gonna move the spiritual weapon out. Uh, move it like I guess next to me, guys. We gotta make our way in there somehow, one way or the other. I might have made that a little harder just now. I uh, noticed. <laughs> um. Oops. I'll prepare a sacred flame against the first thing I see. Um. I figure they're probably waiting for us. You guys saw some room up ahead. That's probably where they are. Uh, yeah, I saw yeah. a few of them in there. Yeah. 
I guess I'll I'll cure Two. wounds actually oh. against Malik. He seems like he could use a little a little help. There you oh, go, Malik. Have some have some healing. Yeah, there is a uh, nice. interesting stalemate that's emerged as Anubet is awakened and his allies have come to his side, but you've destroyed one of the Shabti, which seems to have had some effect. But the others are aware of your presence now. Do you want to try the other hallway? Maybe that one's easier. <laughs> <laughs> this hallway was a bad choice. <laughs> I say laying in a pile of gold. <laughs> Oh, there's left. <laughs> That's it for a Gruck. All right, Saldry. I think Saldry is going to use a wild shape oh um, and turn into. <laughs> I enjoy <laughs> that response. <laughs> um, turn into a giant spider. All right. So if you could pop a giant yeah, no, I, I got spider you. down yeah, for me. I, I got you for sure. Awesome. <laughs> right on top of your friends. <laughs> hey. Awesome. Hi. And then, okay, so the spike growth are only... Oh, Jesus, that is a wall attack. I'm sorry. Uh, the spike <laughs> growth are only I'll so far right. off it's the ground. Good. So I feel like if Saldry in the spider, thank you, uh, spider form up on the wall would not be hurt sure. by them. So yeah, then, reasonable. Uh, someone then, someone could 20, uh, go on top of 30. your giant spider as well, maybe. So, I mean, if some, I don't know how we would rule that if, if someone wanted to mount Saldry. Well, it would have to be on their turn, so... Right? Uh, you know, you, you can either take an action right now... I can't, right I can't now, hold my or... movement. Yeah, you, you either can act right now on your own, or you can wait and let someone else, you know, mount up. But that would sort of end up wasting your turn... Well, not wasting, sacrificing your, your action this turn. So the spider turn, you know, Saldry turns into the spider and then kind of lurches forward, but then turns around and waits to see if any party members say anything. <laughs> Indecision, and, uh, spider. If they do not. <laughs> I've got my own method yeah. of transportation for this. <laughs> right? Right? So then he wanders off up the wall so yeah. that he can get, I think it went a little bit too far. Okay. There we go. Um, and so he is um, on the wall. Okay, excellent. Anything else on your turn, Saldry? Nope, that was all I can do right now. All right. Uh, Nesser Safet, seeing the spider come around the corner, will try and get into range for an attack with his scepter. That's going to require one step forward, which is 2d4 damage to him. Uh, so six points of damage to Nesser Safet, and then another 2d4 as he takes another step to get up into melee range with you. Your spike growth is proving effective here as he takes sustained wounds, but he comes around the corner to try and break your concentration I, on, on the spell. I don't actually need to concentrate on the spell, but I, I forgot to mention that I'm on the upper wall, like I would have chosen the north wall, and, and at least 10 feet up on the wall, since I can spider climb. Okay, yeah, I mean, the, the, I the tunnel, that changes his the, the, the hallway itself is 10 feet wide, so there's no way to be, like, more on, okay. on one side of it than the other. You can be 10 feet up, however. The ceiling yep. is, is probably, a, a, you know, high enough to accommodate that. Um, if you are 10 feet up, though, with and this guy being 10 feet tall, I think, unfortunately, you're you're probably still in, he can his, still get at me. in his range. Cool. Is this um, something that Gruck can see? Because I had prepared Sacred Flame. Oh, no, I, can, I cast Cure Wounds. Sorry, Cure. Yeah. You can see Saldry, but you can't really see. The, the attack's kind of coming at her from around the corner. Um, first one with this Kopesh. Uh, that is a... 18, 27 to hit. Um, so 15 points of damage to yeah. Saldry as a spider. Okay. And I think okay. a concentration check. 
Yeah, I just checked. It is, uh, is it, concentration. Is it? Is it? Okay. It up. Yeah. Okay. I used Saldry to do that, though, right? Instead. Of... Uh, well, you would be concentrating as the giant spider, so you would you okay. you would be a Constitution save from the giant spider. Uh, ability check, yeah. Constitution saving, saving throw. throw. Yeah, saving throw. Saving throw. Uh, DC okay. ten. Oh, no. unlucky. Unlucky. <laughs> the spike growth recedes as you break concentration and um, Nesser Safet, thinking that he can yeah, press yeah. the advantage here, will take a second attack with his Magi Scepter. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Uh, you will take... 15 point, well, not all, we're not going to take all of it, because only two of it is bludgeoning. The rest of it is poison. Is a giant spider immune to poison? I don't, I would think so, but it doesn't say that on the sheet. I don't, let me check. Let's check, let's check the official source for the giant spider. I would feel like they might have some poison resistance or something, but they don't say anything about it. Doesn't look Maybe like not. it. So yeah, I think that's like cats not having dark vision. No, that's uh, that's 15 points of damage in, on top of the um, 15 points that you previously took, Saldry. Hmm. I am back into a gnome. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Um, minus. Uh, how much was the overflow on that? Oh no. Minus oh. two. Okay. I think it was two. Uh, yeah. Nessar Safet has some movement oh, left. Oh, and so he will retreat to a more tactical position. And that is his turn. Abasi uh, looks at you all as if he's not sure what to do. He's like, oh, what is that? What's happening? Why don't you go in first? Just hang tight, Obasi. <laughs> Obasi starts to stride tight. forward, his scepter upraised. Kree. Uh, I am Obasi going to... Obasi gets 11 temp HP. Having seen everybody else gone out this way, I guess I'll follow suit and start getting... I can get to about here. Let me double check my movement is 30. Yeah, it is. I don't see anything. Um, so I'm going to take the dash action, see if I can get a little bit closer. That's actually... Let's just go straight through here and see what I see. Ah, bad news. Hello. Um, I don't. Oh, there's nobody here that's attack. Uh, and that'll end uh, my turn. No good bonus action for me. All right. Top of the round on initiative 22, Ahmedes is going to. Oh, well, he hasn't had much to do yet. Uh, that's okay. Malik. Uh, before it reaches your turn, you see the vision cones once again, boom, bathe Cree in this light of perception, <laughs> and the voice booms out from the tunnel beyond, and he says, Yes, approach. Submit. I'm coming to you. Or I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't. Uh, Malik, it's your turn. What is he even saying? <laughs> All right, I am going to charge forward I can do 20 feet 25 30 35 40 foot movement oh hello there I, I have found a target again not at my preferred range this is too close even even at this mm -hmm. but I will launch into a flurry of attacks on this and then my jaw kind of drops mid-attack <laughs> as I see what's around the corner. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe the, the reckless attack uh, sort of impetus is, goes away, and I maybe decide to attack a little bit more cautiously here. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, we'll... Uh, you just hear go, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, as he's swinging his pole arm. Hmm. Yeah, very distracted on that first yeah. one there. And follow up with another swing. I've regained uh, myself yeah, a little hits. bit. The, the surge of terror that rips through you has resulted in a jolt of adrenaline that you convert into a deadly slash. 17 points of 
Is, well, is there more coming? There's yeah, always there's, more coming with you. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's the necrotic more coming. So there's another 10 points. Oh my more gosh. All right. Uh, 27 points of damage to uh, Nessar Safet. He does not like that. And I flip around and smash him with the butt end of my pole arm as well. Even at the distance of 10 feet, my freakishly long bugbear arms are able to deal blow while remaining at a somewhat safe distance. Wow. All right. But uh, maybe not 11, miss, 11 misses in the parade. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is my turn. All right. Uh, Anubet sees you now. Oh, no. The footsteps resume. Doom. 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 And, uh, uh -oh. oops, sorry. I didn't mean to turn that back off. Uh, he will hear, um, yeah, there is a very large figure that approaches you. A dark obsidian monolith of stone and animated construct essence. His head like a jackal covered in this golden crown like cowl. Covering his body are runes of ancient eldritch nature. In his hand, he wields an enormous tower shield coated in spikes up and down its surface. And in his other hand, he clutches a sword that burns with the same purplish energy that is similar to what flickers in the braziers around you. He looks at you and reaches out with his sword and brings it down at a, you're 10 feet away. So he brings his sword down upon you from where he stands, uh, two attacks. I don't like this. That's not a good name. Not like you are not reckless, though. I am uh, not reckless. Fifteen. He misses. Woo. Uh, he doesn't. Eighteen. <laughs> that hits. Uh, you suffer fifteen points of damage. What sort of damage? Um, it is slashing. slashing damage. All right. And with his. Bonus action, he raises his shield defensively and crouches behind it, forming an implacable barrier in the middle of the hallway. Gremel. Hold up, where uh, is the so, implacable barrier? Uh, I'm going to look to Grook, because I can't see around the corner, and I'll say, uh, can you see anything down that corridor there? It sounds bad. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should go that way. I'm gonna go the other way. Uh, I'm, I'll take the wall, and I'm gonna I'm gonna move um, thirty feet to here, and then I'm gonna cast Spider Climb on myself and move up the wall, shimmy around the the grease. I'll use my bonus action, um, so I'll move. An, I can move another another uh, ten feet. Yeah, I guess five feet would be mounting the wall, so actually it's another five feet. Okay, uh, and then I will use my bonus action to dash. Um, okay, just so I can get a view of what's around here. I see what's here. I'm going to go around the corner, though. I'm going to go back to um, to here. That's just my turn, but I'm, I'm ready now with my spider client to be able to come around and, and, and shoot and then duck again behind the grease. Okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, Grok, it is your turn. Bonus action, we're going to maneuver our spiritual weapon 20 feet towards usefulness. And then real action, or not real action, just movement. We'll maneuver ourselves 30 feet towards usefulness. Okay. Um, as far as doing anything, I'll prepare Sacred Flame for the first thing that I can see. All right. Saldry. <clears throat> so is the shield metal or rock? Uh, well, you haven't seen it yet. First. But now you do. Slowly <laughs> yeah. And for the benefit of everyone, I'll give you a glimpse at what Anubet looks like to you. 
Uh, the shield mm. appears to be, it's possible it's stone, it's possible it's metal, it's a little bit hard to say. Hmm. And he wouldn't be able to determine that. Um, okay, so Saldry is going to take a stab at it, assuming that it is not metal, but is instead earth or stone, uh, right? So dirt or stone, um, I can instantaneously excavate it or whatnot. So I think that Saldry is going to target the, the barrier of his shield and try and um, crumble it in his hands. Okay, uh, I like what you're doing here and I, I, I like the creativity here. I. I'm trying to think of how to rule this because this is a, mm -hmm. a very powerful being and I think it's unlikely that you would be able to disintegrate his shield with a cantrip. Um, I'm trying to think At of At least like, maybe loosen his grip? Yeah. I, I would say that, you know, conventionally this spell is, it has more to do with environment or constructed uh, buildings rather than like a creature that has a, a sort of, you know, el okay. mineral element to it. Um, I'm trying to give as liberal an interpretation here as I can. If it's not something that applies, he can do something else. I Just will on a say, meta level, you know what he, I mean. If 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 Saldry yeah. wouldn't know this, then I can cast it and he can fail. Well, you would be you would be well familiar at this point with your capabilities in terms of what you can mold, in terms of molding earth and what might be. Oh, that's okay. a little loud. Sorry. Uh, what might be beyond your capabilities there? I, I think you would probably intuit that this is probably not something that you can just mold away, since it is it is a magical item. You presume that is attached to this creature's person. Okay. So you, you um, don't have to spend you don't have to spend your action case, on that. I, I, I would say you would be aware okay. that you can that that's probably unlikely Not, to succeed. Wouldn't have worked. Okay. Um I can see him it doesn't work on um Let's try this one instead. Saldry is going to see if he can manage to confuse the thing. Oh, that's pretty clever. And do it like this. All right. Uh, confusion actually is a is an area of effect spell. Uh, where is do you the, want? Not, might they turn up as purple? Can I try and get this? It's because of yeah. It's it? because so of your your player could... color by default. But um, yeah, you, you, would you like me to move the template, or would you like to move it? Would you mind? Uh, sure. Either way. Yeah, just, I, I assume um, so you want maybe on, something uh, something sort of like this. Bet. You bet. Yes. Uh, that could be quite dangerous to them. Uh, let's mm, see nice. how they fare on their. Wisdom saving throws. Now, some bad news. Uh, Nesser Safet has magic resistance, so he's going to have advantage on his save. Uh, that is a 23. As far as Anubet is concerned, um, he has also, for a reason that you are not yet aware of, advantage on this saving throw. Uh, that is a Ooh. 16, no. which just saves. Ooh. I'm very sorry, but there oh you God. sensed for a moment that your confusion was about to affect Anubet, but you gleaned hmm. a piece of knowledge that there is something protecting him. That just when your magic was about sure. to take hold, some, some protective force stripped it away. I'm good. All right. Or ineffective, at least. <laughs> <laughs> you are discouraged, but not deterred. Nessar Safet will take a step backwards. Uh, Malik? That will, yes, absolutely. Please and thank you. Well, you know what, actually, well, you already rolled. It's okay, it's fair enough. Uh, 19 hits. All right. 
so... He's not actually going to be able to do anything after doing this, so I was thinking I should just disengage, but he did. Not, I did not do that in time, so you, All right. you get a vindictive blow as Nesera <laughs> Safet uh, steps backwards. Um, and he will settle here and use his action for something else. Abasi steps up and he says, what's happening? What's happening? I don't hear him. Uh, Abasi feels like he should do something, so he's going to use a spell on spirit guardians, nice. which will be surrounding nice. him. Uh, well, I'll I'll spare you the template. I'll just I'll just measure it uh, on a turn by turn basis. Creed. I don't think you hear him because I think he's already here. Um, and I'm gonna try to squeeze past Malik. Get here. Oh, hello. Yep, he's already here. Um, Messer Safet lashes out at you with his held action that he was hanging on to. Somebody had to get 25 it. 25 to hit. Uh, you suffer 26 oh, points of damage. That hurt badly. All right. Uh, this was a mistake. Uh, I will <laughs> look up at the big guy. Um, is uh, I think it's Nesser Safet. Does that look damaged? At yes. All? Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, take two. The Ushabti Nesser Safet is certainly looks like he's been damaged. All right, I'm gonna try to get him down so, or it down so it doesn't do anything else, and take two swings at it with my long sword. Uh, 21 hits, yes. Well okay. done, well struck. Damage. 10 points of damage. 10 points of damage to Nesser Safat, nice. And with my second swing. Ooh, oh, yes! Just what I was hoping for, baby. Ooh. Nice. But if wow. it's already damaged, I don't want to put too much into it, so I'm going to do a, a level 1 Divine Smite on this bad boy. All right. Along with the damage from the actual sword attack, critical hit. So this actually gets plus 4d6 nice. damage because it's with my long sword of sharpness. All right. Uh, so give me all those. Give me all those rolls. Oh, I don't know how to type 4d6. There we go. Oh no. Oh, that's oh, not that great. That was a <laughs> terrible roll. What? Okay. All right. All and right. Then I'll do my divine Ooh. smite. It's all right. <laughs> it's it's, all, right. it's, it's all, gonna be it's okay. All it's all adding up. And the Divine Smite gets critical. Nickel and diamond. Yeah. So I will critical roll mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah, 17 that's, points. That's, that's pretty all good. Right. Uh, so all together, you are now sitting at, let's see, 24 uh, plus 17, 41. 31, 41 points of damage. Uh, Feeling good. Not sure. You should yeah. be because... Nessar Safet is just destroyed by your blow. Whew. Nice. <gasps> your long sword bites into the shoulder of the construct and it just cuts straight through one of the clay plates and it hits what appears to have been a gemstone somewhere within the chest of this Ushabti and this blinding burst of energy just shatters the construct all over the floor and it is slain and as it dies, there is a visible shift of energy as some latent enchantment is siphoned off of Nesser Safet and like a vacuum, it is just sucked straight into Anubet. And Anubet roars in anger. Oh, so it wasn't a good thing? And then I'm gonna point my sword at him and say the next one's coming for you, boy. And that'll end my turn. <laughs> Take well, 12 well. temp HP, or whatever half manages to get to you. Yes, does half get sucked away? Achmedes is able to see you, uh, and you are within 30 feet of it, as you are 20 feet away, and so Achmedes from across the room siphons half of your healing for himself. Still Ooh. appreciate it. <laughs> you get six. That's good for me. I don't think you're going to survive it, even with the six. <laughs> really, uh, <laughs> we'll see. The only hit point that matters is the last one. 
Achmedes okay. will come up to within 10 feet of you and reaching out from a distance, try and swipe at you with his Medjai's scepter. Uh, that is a 13 to hit. Phew. Blocked. All right, he'll step Hold forward. He'll step forward close enough to use his Kopesh, which is a less lesser range, 25. That will hit. <laughs> All right. Uh, 16 oh! points of damage. All right. And then Just... Achmedes will um, take... He'll risk the attack by taking uh, a step backwards to here. I don't know I'll if you take... still have a reaction or not. I do. I haven't had a, a good use of a reaction in a while now. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Twenty-six. Ooh. Ooh. No. Or actually, can I put a divine smite in a reaction? I can. Paladins can do anything, man. They just <laughs> paladins, baby. <laughs> Image dice everywhere. Paladins. That's the you know. All right, let's do a second level Divine Smite on him. Uh, I'll do the damage roll for the normal hit first. Not that great. Uh, All right, nine points. And then it's uh, 3d6 for a level two Smite. Nine points more damage. I think they should be d8s, shouldn't they? They should. Oh, they should be. I I'll let you re-roll it, or you can take the nine. Okay, you re-rolled it. All right. Uh, See what 12. happens. Yeah. All right, 12 points of damage to Achmedes, the final surviving Ushabti. Uh, that is the end of his turn, Malak. All right, he didn't back up quite far enough to get away from Malak because he's still 15 feet away. With my freakishly long arms and my long oh, weapon, cow. I strike across, uh, yeah. across behind. Uh, it's crazy. And uh, and deliver my blows. This is making up for the lightning oh, earlier. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Maybe cuddle them a little bit closer than they otherwise. I'm going to give him a I'm going to give him a cover bonus on this because sure. both your yeah. ally as well as Anubet and the stone wall, all of which yes. are kind of contributing. Hmm. How stupid do I feel? All right, I am <laughs> feeling. <laughs> He needs. To, he's awfully big. I'm not going to do it. I should do it, but Malak just refuses. <laughs> and it pays off, at least on the first strike. That hits. Nice. As I slam home for 17 points of damage, plus the more that's always coming. All right. The ever, more, the ever more damage from the zealot barbarian. Indeed. I zealously strike out one last time with the business end you of the You sure helmet. you don't want to be reckless? I'm very sure. I don't know. <laughs> oh, hey, man. Yeah. 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 Come on. Good decision. Because <laughs> you taunted it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Is that three or four <laughs> for you tonight? Uh, it's been a lot. Uh, so I slammed yep. in for 25 yeah, more you're getting points. all the crits today, Dan. Oh my gosh, 25 points as many as the rest of us have had ones. <laughs> yeah. Ones. Yeah. It, it, it then I can't quite reach him with the butt of the spear, so I will flip around and attack the big guy with the pole arm butt. All right. He had raised his shield. Your attack has disadvantage. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, I miss. So okay. I am. I am pleased nonetheless, and I finish my turn and gain my badly needed temp HP. I think. Am I close enough to Gruck? Do, do. Yep, you are. That is great. Half seven. of its half of the seven streams directly into Achmedes, restoring some of his vibrance. Um, you both get. You both get seven. All right. Um. And I end my turn. All right, at the end of your turn, with Ushabti, with Nekanab dead, Anubet cries out in this uh, abyssal tongue that uh, you do not recognize. And he says, um, let's see. You cannot fathom the true power of my wrath. And he will use the Path of Reckless Pain oh. as a legendary action oh. as he lunges 20 Ooh. feet forward in a straight line. Ooh. Well, he'll not go the full way. Uh, Kree and Malik, uh, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. 
That succeeds, right? A four? It You does still not. have inspiration. <laughs> is it is an inspiration a re-roll or is it an additional? Yeah, it die? is a it is a re-roll after. I would wish it would I wish it were different, but uh you can you can re-roll after. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it anyway. I, I, have a I am going to, ex I'm going to expend my my relentless uh, pure, my relentless zeal. I right. believe is the name of it to reroll right. roll once, once per once uh, per rage. So I will expend nice. that ability. Is it a full reroll well. or is it you roll one more d20? I think it's a full reroll, but I fail in either case. All so right. I'll look it up for next time. I'm you, wondering. Yeah, I'll, I'll both, leave it at that. You both suffer. Uh, 19 points of bludgeoning damage and you are both knocked back five feet. I'll say pre you're kind of shunted here and Malik to here. You are both knocked prone. And I am also knocked unconscious, but because of my half orc uh, Ah, yes. Resilience. Feature, I Ooh. arrive back with one HP saying, you think that's what it's gonna take? I didn't hear no bell. All right. <laughs> From you're back to one, uh, but you are prone, and it is now Anubet's turn. Uh, he will turn towards Malik and Saldri, and he's going to make one attack against each of you. Uh, with his sword, first against Malik, who is prone. 19? It does, it does hit, yes. All right. Malik, you suffer 13 points of slashing damage, and Saldri, an attack comes against you as well. Uh, that is a 25 to hit. Saldri, you suffer 10 points of slashing damage. Okay. And... Let's see. The surviving Ushabti is Akmedes. Okay, so... Got it. All right, that is Anubet's turn. Gremel, you are up. Okay, uh, Gremel is going to move um, 5, 10, 15, um, 20... Can I move diagonal on corner like that? On a corner like that? Or do I have to go around it? Yeah, sure. As okay. long as the corner is clear. Yeah, 20... 25... Uh, 30. Now I can see the big bad. Uh -huh. And I will pull out my fancy bow and look at it and go, it's not quite a pistol, but it's gonna have to do. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the waxing crescent. Um, yeah, as you draw the bowstring, a, an arrow of pure radiant light forms out of nothingness. Whom are you targeting? They, uh, the, the big fella. Okay. Once per day, whoever wields this bow can cast Moonbeam spell for me. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, that's sweet. Oh well, I won't do that now. But I'll, uh, I'll, I'll think about that for next time. Twenty-seven. Uh, Twenty-seven hits. for the first as attack. Anubet is intently looking forwards and not backwards as you deal fifteen. Uh, points. Fifteen was the second attack. Oh, fifteen misses. Uh, misses. Fifteen misses. Uh, that's yes. okay. I will do my first attack, which does uh, eight points of damage plus sneak attack. Um, which yes, is, indeed. An extra ten and eight points of damage is, is radiant. I don't does sneak attack just add the same amount of yeah. damage type on. So yep. so there we go. That's eighteen points of radiant damage. All right. And then with my bonus action, I will zip right back to where I was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love it. Uh, anything else, Gremel? Uh, nope, that's everything. All right, Gruck. Gruck. Uh, um, first. <sighs> so annoying. All right, we'll we'll move move our spiritual weapon up as bonus action, as action action or not action action, but as movement. We're gonna move up here. We're gonna see our very large and imposing not friend, and. <laughs> Um, we're gonna fairy fire him. All right. Uh, place your template so I can see who would be in the area of that, and also um, what the saving throw DC would be. Yeah. 
so it's only gonna hit him. I'm not gonna risk hitting Kree. Okay. Got it. DC 17. Let's see what he can do here. Probably not much. That's a one on his saving throw. Uh, He does have advantage, actually, because of a layer of protection he has. So I'm going to roll again. That is a eight. Also fails. He will use a legendary resistance to shrug off the effect of fairy fire. Um... That was action, bonus action, movement. That's it for me. All right. Uh, Back, actually. Oh, no, I'm on the wrong tool. SOS. Yes, that he will not do anything else. Saldry, it's your turn. Okay, so Saldry, at some point, uh, managed to pick up this moon sickle. I think that was in the first one that we That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I assume that he's within reach. Yeah. Just as I am. Absolutely. Cool. This was one of the the weapons that was entombed with one of the warriors in the Chamber of Repose. Uh, and a 19 does not hit. Oh, that's not. not good. Wow. All right. <laughs> I don't want to scoot you away. Damn. Damn. Okay. Mm. Um, I can go ahead and try and help folks with the, um... Healing Spirit as a bonus action, since that was an action, I'll go mm-hmm. ahead and use a slot to do that so that people are not quite as bad off. All right, nice. And then I'm not going to move because I don't want to move. Wanna, where do you want to position me. that? Um, let's see. Um, Kree is the one who's most hurt, yeah? Yeah, he's, he's pretty badly wounded. Do you want to put it just next to him? Yeah, the mic in it needs to go hug him. <laughs> you can put it right on top of him. Cool. All right. Um, well done. Well, that is on Kree's turn that it affects, or? Um. Whenever you or a creature you can see moves into the spirit space or starts moves its turn there, yeah. So that would be yeah, on, on his right on his turn. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, it is then going to go to a bossy, but before it does, um, well, no. Yeah, no. Okay, it goes to Abasi, uh, who will step around the corner to where he can see, and he will target Anubet, and he will unleash a Guiding Bolt. Crying out bravely, but Anubet just casually raises his massive shield, and the bolt just, like, uh, bursts into a radiant flare against it and has no effect. Abasi looks shaken. Kree. Abasi is concentrating on spirit guardians. Yes, that is we true. We need to remember that next time it gets to Anubet. Yes. Now, I don't know whether spirit guardians pass through walls. I think yeah. I would rule no. And so from his previous position, Anubet wouldn't have actually been hit by them. Makes but sense. Now, that, now that there's a direct line of sight between Anubet and Abasi on Anubet's turn, that will come into effect. Uh, Kree, you are prone. You are wounded. There is a towering monolith of abyssal fury standing over you. I'm gonna look up at that. That's very intimidating. Do kind of one of the like Wolf of Wall Street like pumps on the chest <laughs> and use that to, to do a 40 point heal of lay on hands to myself. All right, there we go. And uh, I'll leave myself with five points just for the future. I've got some bad news for you. You get 20 points of healing as 20 of those points are siphoned off directly into the Ushabti. Oh, this is a bad day. Don't forget about your healing spirit as well. You've done that. Oh, yeah, and I... uh, That's a D6, right? Yep. 
do yeah. I get all of the D6 or do I get half of the D6? You absolutely do not. <laughs> uh, you get three plus the, abil uh, the ability modifier, which is four. So it would be seven. I'll give you the larger half. You can take four. Oh. And Achmedes gets three. And I'm going to use my sword thing. and start pushing myself up and say, I got you right where I want you now. Uh, All right, you stand. That'll end That's half your movement. Uh, cause I don't, all right, this thing has a very long reach. Um, but that doesn't mean I need to get closer to the other person. Um, I'll just stay where I am for now. Defeated. All right. Uh, very well. Achmedes will, um, you, yeah, you get 10 HP. Uh, you get six. Achmedes gets six. Oh, I just hope he also gets at his temp, but I'm thinking he doesn't. <laughs> um, well, he didn't have any either way. Uh, it is his turn now, Achmedes. He is going to see that Anubet is handling these interlopers, and at his master's command, he will do two things. One, from 10 feet away, he is going to lash out at you with his scepter. That is a 25 to hit. Yep. You suffer 21 points of damage, and then Achmedes will dutifully back up. All right, that hurt, but I'm still standing. Um, Malik. All right, Malik is going to attempt. Uh, he's going to make like, well, first of all, he's going to stand up. We'll start there. All right, half your movement. Yep, so I have 20, fo 20 feet remaining. What I would like to do uh, would be to try to roll past this guy. Uh, I am with acrobatics, if at all possible. I'm going to try to get p underneath his shield and past him. I'm not even sure if that is something that can be done, but I'm going to try to start to go up high so that he will try to reach with his shield and then tumble under if I can. If I can't, I will brute barbarian mode. I would say that this diagonal move here is one that you can do in this circumstance. The confines are pretty tight, but uh, it isn't necessarily, it is a direct diagonal move. It isn't moving through his space. So um, yeah, I think I'll allow that in this circumstance. In other circumstances, I might require you to roll something. I think in this, in this case, I think it's fine. Okay. I was fully intending to have to roll, so I will take it. <laughs> so I move to here, so that's five. Now I will treat it as difficult terrain for you, so that cost you ten. Okay. So you've already spent half, that cost you another ten. All right. And this square directly to my south is occupied by by uh, no. Anubet, or no, 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 no. Uh, his his base is the is the four, uh, the two by two, just to the right of you now. All right, so I could go here for 15. Yep. And I can sneak this corner too or no? Am I pushing my luck? Uh, yeah, you could do that, I suppose. Well, actually, I suppose it would take me out of, well, I'll just leave it here for now. Okay. And I will attack uh, the only thing I can, which is a new bet. All so right. I will bring a uh, chap, chop at the monolith, literally. Let's see if you can hit him. Let's see if I can hit him. I am going to attack recklessly. 23 hits. All right. I strike in for plus a little bit more. A total of 21 points of damage. Wow. Nice. 21 points of damage. All right. I persist uh, the attack recklessly. And uh, miss recklessly. No. Fifteen misses. <laughs> and I attempt the trusty butt. And Sixteen also miss. misses. No. All right. He's he turns. Butt. He turns towards you. This is unacceptable. Why are you not dead? Wisdom uh, saving throw. He takes a wisdom saving throw against spirit guardians. Thank you. And succeeds, but I think Spirit Guardians is half. Uh, yes. Yep, I have it popped out. I should keep 
let me scroll until I can pop that myself. Popping these oh. out is the best thing. I have like five of them popped out right now. I'm gonna <laughs> re I'm gonna replay that card because I don't I think I scrolled past it and didn't see it, but no, don't consume a spell slot. Alright, yes, pop it out. There we go. Uh, okay, so his damage on that is fifteen. Not bad. Half down nice. to seven. Um all right. Anubet turns towards you. He's going to make one attack against uh, Malak and one attack against Kree, trying to subdue these use, these upstarts who are interloping in his domain. Uh, first against Malak. Advantage. Oh. That's a hit. Malak, you sustain 12 points of damage, and then secondly against Kree. Uh, 18, maybe misses. Shield down, shield above me, holding Nuts. it as close oh, as nice. I can. Nice All right. one. Anubet <laughs> roars in frustration. He made two attacks, and yet there's two of you still here. How is this possible? Gremel. I'm going to come around the corner here. Oh, I immediately see this. Oh, you know what? Wait, he's, he's going to do one more thing. Uh, he will okay. raise his shield defensively to prepare and brace against an attack from... Um, from the north. Okay. Gremel. Uh, as I come around the corner, still attached to the wall with my spiked wheels. Yeah. Uh, I see this. Uh, I see. Uh, Achmedes, yes. Mendez. Yeah. And I will use the um, the waxing crescent to cast moonbeam on it. Ooh, fancy. Now, is Grease concentration based? Nope. Negative. Okay. Mm -mm. Cool. So Moonbeam, you may want to, since you have this item now, you might want to drag the Moonbeam spell into your character sheet. Yeah, I, um, I've done it. Got it. Okay, perfect. And that affects on its turn, I think, right? Yep, on, it, on its turn. Um, and then I think I'm just going to move a uh, back around the corner again, and I'll take <laughs> as my bonus action. Playing I'll a KG. Take, uh, all right. I'll take the dodge action. Very nice. Uh, Gruck? I just want to Actually, note that you know the what? Moonbeam DC is 17 from the item. Yeah. Uh, yeah, true. you can change the spell on your character sheet to have a flat DC. Um, yeah, will do. At the end of Gremel's turn, Anubet is going to use the Path of Reckless Pain and surge oh. forward, knocking all three of you aside, or at least trying to. Dex save? Dex save, yes. Oh, what did I just... I didn't mean to remove that, sorry. Rut roll. I meant to roll it. A 10, a 12, and a 8. All right, you all suffer... 20 points of bludgeoning damage, and you are all knocked five feet oh, uh, no. out of his space. Saldry, you're knocked here. You are all three also mm. knocked prone. Grok, it's your turn. All right. My spiritual weapon is finally useful again. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna start with that. Uh, let's go attack. Come on, big number. Oh, I disadvantaged. It's not disadvantage. We can look at 10, the first one, which 10 was plus 10 nine. plus 9, 19. No, no. 19 misses. Fuck. <laughs> uh, we'll stand up. Sure, we'll go with that. And that's down to 15 movement. I feel relatively confident to stay here. We're going to... Um, if I cast Spirit Guardians, do we double the Spirit Guardian-ness? I think so, yeah. I'm doing it. Nice. Won't place measure template, we'll consume the spell slot. And okay. So now he makes two wisdom saving throws at the start of his turn. Okay. Wow. That's not going to be fun. Uh, all right. Moving on to Saldry. Yep. Okay. 
Seldry, it is your turn. Oh, I you need are, my... Yes. You are staggered to your knees as Anubet has just kind of overrun you and moved further down the corridor. Um, I think it would be... Is it an action to stand up? I can never remember this. No, just half your movement. So if you stand, you just then half my have okay. uh, 10 feet I'll of movement left. Okay. I think I think I want to try and do this because Saldry thinks maybe he might be undead and this would be useful. Mm-hmm. All right. If he's not a construct, so he'll stand back up and and scooch back actually. Now, but then yeah, uh, bear, try and bear do, in mind. Um, mm-hmm. Do bear in mind that based on his description and based on the nature of the Ushabti. You mm. you sense he could be abyssal, could be a, a demon, could be undead, could mm. be a construct. So it's it's unclear mm-hmm. which way that might end up going. We'll see. He'll take a but chance. But I, I think this works. Himself. This works against any, any of those. There's not like blight where some yeah, are, yeah, are yeah, totally yeah. immune. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That sounds right. All right. Let's have it. So let's see if you can hit his armor class. Oh, oh, not with a 12. Oh, not with a 12. Oh, and you still got inspiration. No, no ma'am. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. I haven't used that yet. Can yeah, I, do it. Can I, I, can't, I, can I use it for that? You Let's may try. if you wish, although he is a tough nut to crack. Oh, oh but that's oh, 26. Yes, that hits. Um, and so, so that should be 2d8. D8. d8, yeah. Wow, nice. Not 15, 15 necrotic damage to yeah, Anubet. Nice. Uh, I think I can scoot just a little bit more uh, with half of my movement from standing up. Nice. Uh, that works completely. All right, it is Abasi's turn. He will stand and with a cry of alarm, he's going to disengage. And he'll use his remaining movement to back up. Uh, but he'll look at Gruck and see that Gruck sustained a wound, so he'll cast a healing word bonus action for a meager four points of damage uh, of healing to Gruck. Thanks, thanks, buddy. Cree, <laughs> it is your turn. Uh, he's okay. he still has temp HP, or no? Does he not? Uh, I don't remember. I'll roll it anyway. Yeah, Saldry Abbasi's, got 13. Abbasi's already HP. over. Abbasi's um, yeah, okay. Thank you. Saldry. Well, let's see. When would when does that apply? End of Saldry's and, turn. And do you have to see the target? Uh, no, just whenever they end a turn within 30 feet of me. Okay. Saldry, you get plus five. So it would be the, seven. Oh, plus five. You get plus five. Achmedes takes the other five as Ahmed is, is within 30 feet of you. Just. Kree, you're up. <sighs> this is terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will take a couple steps forward and start heading up this way. D6 from Healing Spirit, start of your turn. Yes, please. D6 plus four. Plus four, four so did by four two. List. Healing spirit add on. Mm. You would get three, three and Achmedes steals three. Plus three. And as I get over here, looking up at that guy, I'm gonna, uh, let's do round two of this. And um, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be able to cure myself enough that this is going to make a difference. Anubet is unamused. <laughs> oh. And so I'm going to, or actually, I have to go one step further to be close enough to hit him. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay out two kind of drunken swings towards him. Obviously, <laughs> bad. No, Too sir. Too bad. No. So bad. <laughs> so right. bad. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, um, hmm. Can I cast this on myself? Um... It doesn't say that I can't. Um, I will cast Sanctuary on myself as a bonus action. You may. Uh, you may do it. If, if oh. I'm allowed, and uh, that'll make it a little bit more difficult for me, but not by much. All right. Uh, 
end of your turn, yep. Achmedes will use a legendary action on the blade of unleashed anger as his sword whoom, springs with renewed fire as necrotic, uh, as, as this like underworld, sort of otherworldly fire erupts down the blade. Uh, it is Achmedes' turn now at the top of the round. He takes moonbeam damage. He does. Uh, he needs to make a saving throw. Yeah. DC 17 constitution saving throw. Uh, it is a magical effect, so he has advantage. Okay. Where did that go? Uh, there it is. And that is a Looks failure. Better. So let's get that moonbeam damage onto Achmedes as the waxing crescent just makes this shaft of light appear from nothing that burns the construct for 14 points of radiant damage. Very nice. He wants to get the hell out of that, so he's going to come after... Well, no, he need... his, his instructions are to stay near Anubet, so he's going to move up to here. And he's going to take an attack of opportunity. As so be it. My area. So be it. I swivel around and strike make out it, with my Make halberd. it count, sir. I, I suggest <laughs> you make it count. I <laughs> certainly want the to. The situation for sure. is uh, a bit dire because he keeps stealing your health, and it's it looks true. like he's repairing himself I'm, over I'm and over. I'm trying to remember <sighs> if I uh, attacked recklessly this turn or not. I think that I did. Anyone remember? Anyone? Yes. Okay. So I am still I on advantage. Last time. Yeah, Ooh. so it doesn't matter in either Ooh. case. I'm sure. Well, I don't know. No. No. Okay. I swing and a miss. Sorry. Uh, he will approach and he's going to attack you twice, uh, trying to subdue, subdue you with his scepter. Uh, 18. And 18 hits. All right. Uh, you take. Let me break this down for you. It's 13 points of bludgeoning, which would be down to six. Yep. And then four more for a total of 10. Okay. Uh, he attacks you again. That is a critical hit, although these are not so effective against you. Uh, but 24, that's pretty good. Down to 12 slashing 24 damage. 24 is effective against anybody. All right. Yeah. Uh, I am taking damage. Okay. Achmedes is expressionless and just silent as he goes about his grisly work. It is your turn well, I now, Malik. I suspect Malik. he's enjoying it. Mm. I am going to take a step <laughs> to the left into this mic, to possibly hike, hug a mic in it. I don't know if that uh, works that way. So, it well, does. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Abort, <laughs> abort. I want to kill this thing. Uh, I'm going to uh, smash it instead, hopefully. I'm going to, uh, if it's still okay, to abort on that one. Sure. It's okay. Sure. I will uh, attack you're, recklessly. You're going right after the uh, Ushabti, or? I'm going after the Ushabti. Okay. Uh, yes, I want to end this life-stealing little bastard. I will smash him as, I, as hard as I can in his expressionless face. 18 is his armor class. Uh, all right. <laughs> Smash it in for uh, 15 damage. Wait for and the bit, it. And the bit Wait more. Wait for it. <laughs> a total of 20 <laughs> points of damage. Nice. It's as much yeah. as he stole it's from looking, Matt. It's looking a bit wounded. All right. I'm going to raise up my weapon and continue my assault. Oh yes, that's it. Most definitely. Slam down for another 12. 12, no. all right. Your damage. No Reverse riders it. on that one. Reverse the grip, slam in with a polearm butt. Ooh, yes, that's most definitely it. And I do nine points of damage. You have almost Single, you've almost destroyed this construct on your turn. It is looking much worse for wear after your three attacks. It had been almost healed all the way to full before from all of the leeching that it did. Um, it's about to do some more. It may be. We'll see. Anything else on your turn? Nope. But I now am gonna he get can my... move by the mushrooms if you want. 
All right, it's gonna take five of that, and you get the other five. All right. It brings us to Anubet, who is going to dispatch an attack at both you, Kree, and you, Gruk, one at each. Wisdom saving throw first. Yes. Thank Please. you for the reminder. So this beat this is super high. Or ran away. That'll win. It's That'll a save, but he will take half of this, so down to five. Chipping away, he's not looking bad, but uh, oh, I guess it would be two separate saves, yes. I, would, I would say. So let's He's do... also farther away from Albasi, right? Yeah, he's not in range. Oh, he's not in range of Albasi, okay. Yes, this uh, ran away. Well, let me ignore that 11 damage, which was less good, and I'll refund him five, but he does take nine from yours, so that's even better. Um, well done. It's something. He will turn to you and try and retaliate, however, because you have offended him. <laughs> uh, that is a natural one. I can handle that. I Do it again. Do it again, big guy, right here. <laughs> you have goaded him into it. He attacks you again. That's right! Oh my god! <laughs> the fury of the small! two boots off! <laughs> there go both my gloves. No way! You are Come on. and angry! Come on! Brilliant! Amazing! <laughs> I don't even need the luck feet! Uh, all right. An Anubet is... Anubet is displeased. Um, it is Gremmel's turn. Okay, Gremmel is going to... Um, head up this way and as a bonus action I'm going to assign um, the moonbeam to attack to go on Anubet instead but that only happens because of the the waxing crescent I can only do that if I am successfully in actually hitting uh, an arrow into Anubet this mm, turn yes that's right the waxing so, crescent is special it lets you move the beam so I will try to shoot Anubet. Uh, do it. Okay. First attack. 25. Mm. 25 hits. Okay, nice. So that is um, 8 points of uh, radiant damage plus my sneak attack, uh, which adds another 8 points. And I'm going to use Fury of the Small All as right. well. What's that bring a total to? Um, Fury of the Small adds an extra nine uh, points of damage onto that. Wow, nice. So 25 total points of radiant damage? Yep. That is a heavy nice. blow. Anubet is, you see like light starting to seep from like cracks in his armor and he seems possibly wounded. Good stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go uh, uh, for another one. Whoa! Nat 20. Yes! Bet you I wish, wish I'd done sneak attack still, on that one. <laughs> you still had that sneak attack. <laughs> oh well. Uh, 14, 14 points of radiant damage. 4 points of radiant damage as Anubet is like gleaming and erupting with this energy. Anything else on your turn? Uh, at that point, the um, my moonbeam will move over onto uh, Anubet. And I'll just uh, I'll just wink at him from a distance, <laughs> and then and then zip round this zip round this corner with the last little bit of my movement. Mm, you should not have winked because he's mad now and he's coming after you with the path of reckless pain. He's charging over Gruck oh, no. and knocking. I didn't actually uh, have enough movement to do that, so I am actually just uh, here. Knocking Abasi <laughs> aside as he's like charging down towards you, Gruk and Abasi, uh, dexterity saving throws. Oh no. And can I make an opportunity attack as he moves out? You may. Am I within 10 feet of my friend? I am. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, well, the start of his turn. Oh, oh no, goodness. sorry. Oh. Yeah, he, he, yeah he, he's not his turn, he is trolled it? Your, he trolled your moonbeam. It was that wink. I was, he was like, I'm not oh. having this. Um, Kree, your attack just clangs harmlessly off his dense armor. Um, Abasi and Gruk, you take 14 points of bludgeoning damage. You are both knocked prone. And both of us make concentration checks. Uh, 
Abasi succeeds. There is that in his favor. Um, Gremel, that was your turn. Gruck, you are up now. You are prone. I should say you're down now. It is your turn, but you are prone. Um... This guy just doesn't die. Uh, we're gonna maneuver our spiritual weapon over here and do the swingy thing with that. Come on, big numbers. 21? Nice. Mm -hmm. 21 misses. Jesus Yikes. Christ, okay. <laughs> yay, yay. Um, I it just it just hits into his yeah. in, his impenetrable armor and it just clangs off. It's that shield, baby. All right, I'm going to stand up and well, the to hits definitely don't hurt. So, let's give him a sacred flame. All right. He's not so good at the dex save. I'll I'll give you that. Um that is a oh 18. My All right. He just like looks at you and he wins. His, his his stare just kind of puts you <laughs> off, and it, you know, uh, he is one nasty one nasty Stygian monolith. Okay. Uh, as far as I know, he can reach ten feet, so I am definitely not moving. I am happy where I am. Yep. Yeah, happy. Yeah, happy. <laughs> happy as the clam. It's all green <laughs> in the pot. Saldry is, is so dismayed. He's been rather ineffective lately. Um, he knows his friends are around the corner. I think that five, ten. I'm gonna do this so he can see. Um, shoot. Uh, you can I do it, Saldry. Every turn is a chance at redemption. Dude, I know, <laughs> I know. He keeps trying. Um, shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to. We didn't think the heat metal would work because mm. he doesn't have enough metal in him, right? Or is he like last in that he has some on his body? Did we determine that? There are some metallic elements on his body for sure. Yeah, let's try. Trying. Sure. We'll see how this All goes. All right. Does that affect now or on his turn? It's. Is it a now thing? Um, Straight it away. Yeah. Now. Straight away. All right. He's yeah, going to he roll caused, a constitution save. An he succeeds on the save, but his shield and the gold elements on his body start to glow like red hot. And he growls uh, with some anger. You can go ahead and roll some damage. Let's see how that goes. Are you targeting his shield or are you targeting his body? Uh, I was aiming for the shield. because. So there's a trade-off here, because if you target the shield, he could mm -hmm. drop it, in which case yes. he won't be damaged anymore but by the spell. But that makes it easier to hit. Yeah. Or so if you target the body, he can't drop it, but he, uh, you know, so up to you. Uh, hmm. Okay, no, we're gonna do this. If it's a one, it's his shield. If it's a two, it's his body. Right. It's his body then, all right. He, he the, the gold inlay all over his torso just starts to glow hot as he like burns uh, from the inside. Um, he howls in rage and stomps around a little bit. Um, I think for a bonus action, I can move the uh, spirit healing, if I remember correctly. Um, so I could scooch it so that it the, the Mykonid spirits are, or is it fixed? I can never remember this, I apologize. You can move it up to 30 feet. Can I move it? Yes, as a bonus action, I can move it up to 30 feet. So I'm gonna scooch, um, I, I can't scooch the square, but if you could put the square on top of Malik to allow him to be healed, oh, yeah. the mushrooms will fondle his feet. <laughs> ah, oh. Such loving, such loving spores. Um, I'm uncomfortable. Well done, Saldri. Uh, Abasi <laughs> will stand up. He will take the disengage action, and he will learn his lesson. He'll try and stay within 15 feet of Anubet, so uh, so that he can keep his spirit guardians in play. Give uh, a little pat on the back. 
There you we got go. this! Creed. <laughs> um. Oh, end of Saldry's turn. Um. This happens. Nice. Uh. I think getting too close to a new might be problematic for me, and we gotta get rid of this person. I think Malik might be better suited for dealing with, uh. A new bit than me, so I'm gonna start sprinting over in this way and say, you know what, let's get rid of his friends first. And I'll take a couple swings at him with my long sword. For an 18, 18 just hits and 24 also hits. Okay. Thank you. Achmedes is looking pretty beat up, but not dire, so you're gonna need some good damage rolls if you wanna take him out. All right, I'm gonna do a first level Divine Smite with the first hit. Might. There it is. So with that 10 comes an additional 15. Ooh, all right. That nice. helps a lot. And then the he second... He is looking very damaged. Good. I'll see what happens with this second damage roll. What we get, 12 points. And just to be well, careful, I'm going to... I will say that as you cleave into it, you're thinking about unleashing another smite, but your second blow is sufficient that you... I'll just hold it destroy back. <laughs> Achmed's torso, and the Ushabti scatters across the ground. You haven't uh, even seen my full destroyed. power level. And as that happens, there is a roar from Anubet. That was me, as baby. You see this? You see this sight? This beam of energy just kind of go whipping around the corner and slam into Anubet, who reels, but then comes to and looks. Dangerously invigorated. Ooh. I was gonna ask, did that look like it helped him or hurt him? <laughs> uh, roll me an insight check. Sure. And then it took me 20 feet to get here, so I'm gonna go back I'll do it blind. 10 feet to start uh, heading back towards my good old buddy Anubit. Gruck, you are not sure. It is strange. It. In some ways, he reacted as if this was a very negative thing, but now he looks in some way even more dangerous than he was before. It is Malik's turn. All right. Well, I, I nod appreciatively to... Uh, on initiative 20, he can't use his lair action anymore because his Ushabti are dead, but he will cry out with anger. Uh, he will say, You have only destroyed your own allies. I am not diminished. Oof. Gonna gladly take that uh, temp HP, all of it mm -hmm. this time. Oh wait, all of it, yeah. Whew. Malik. Don't forget Malik. You got healing spirit. Uh, healing. Oh spirit. wow, that's a. Uh, hmm. Like to stop that movement here when I come around the corner and see where he is. <laughs> if I can. Uh, all right. Yeah, you can stop short. Although all right. he'd, he'd probably have some cover if you don't move more. Uh, I'm going to take one more step, sadly, at that All point right. in time. All right. And I'm looking I... over my shoulder like, what? Big guy, get it. <laughs> get up <off> here. <laughs> and I am going to smash at. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, he's big. And I'm going to attack as hard as I can so this hopefully invigorated guy will not. I'm doing this recklessly, clearly. Uh, 25 hits. 25 hits. So that's not my finest work. <laughs> but here's a little bit more. Total of 14. Total of 14. All right. Uh, he is looking wounded and enraged to a degree. Uh, 20. 20 misses. All right. I will strike at him with a butt. And hopefully we can get a little bit more damage in here. He 19 Wait, misses. Why is, why is that just 19? That's not right. Mm, uh, you're right. There should be oh, some extra. Yeah, there should be some extra. So it should uh, be a 24 in there, which yeah. hits 23 hits. All right. I will fix that before the next time around. All right. And I do. Let's see here. 10 points of damage with the butt of my pull arm. Nicely done. Is this the end of your turn? This is the end of my turn. At the end of your turn, as Anubet just finishes crying out, I am not diminished, he raises 
uh, his blade for a moment and looks around and his eyes brim with roiling purple flames uh, and he raises his blade up uh, and he will use gaze of deadly focus um, and he is going to I don't know that why this is configured as an attack roll because it should just be All right, sorry about that. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, he will raise his... He raise, spends two legendary actions. He raises his blade up. He is going to select um, Malak, uh, Gremel, and Abasi with this. So Had first... he made the constitution save for the heat metal previously? Because if he failed that, he'd be at disadvantage on attack. He did succeed he on that. He did succeed he did. on that con okay. save, yes. Uh, so first against Malik. Uh, did you attack recklessly, Malik? I did. Okay, uh, that is a hit. Yeah. Uh, you suffer... Nine points of necrotic damage as this beam of energy just slams into you. Uh, next against Abasi. Uh, that is a hit as this beam slams into Abasi for 15 damage. He makes a constitution saving throw. And lastly to Gremel. Has disadvantage because of my deflect. Uh, oh, my nice. My defender deflect attack. Very nice. Well, does a 16 hit? Uh, 16... Uh, yeah, that hits. All right, let me roll again then. Uh, yeah, so yeah. it would be the 16, which hits. And Gremel takes 11 damage and a con concentration check for Gremel. Yeah, for the Moonbeam. Uh, um, the, it, um, it doesn't have concentration, the Moonbeam, with the, the bow. Ooh, it says on the bow's ability. Uh, spider Climb isn't concentration either, I don't wow. think. Wow. That's a powerful item. <laughs> All right. I'll have to talk to our writers about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is his legendary action. That is the end of Malik's turn. It is now his turn. He makes a host of saving throws. And, and he uh, makes several saving throws. HP. Top HP. Oh, okay. sorry. Spider Climb is, is, I think, is concentration. So I will make a concentration. Spider Climb is concentration, yeah. Uh, all right, let's do these saving throws in order. First, uh, Abasi Spirit Guardians. That is a... Ooh, that's a fail. The Constitution saving throw? Question? Oh, uh, is it not? Sorry. Wisdom. Oh, Wisdom. Wisdom is what you're looking for. This is the thing Wisdom. where like, I, I closed the window and I shouldn't have. Uh, well, his Wisdom is worse, so <laughs> uh, that is a fail. Um, so he suffers 16 points of radiant damage. That is not good for him. Uh, who's next? Uh, me, same thing. Wisdom saving throw. What's your DC? 17. Oh, fuck. Uh, I can still give you half damage here. Eight. Oof, all right, who's next? Any, any other saving throws? Heat metal question mark or it is his turn now. No heat metal he happens met on. It's a bonus action on. The okay. Earth right. Once. All right, he needs to thin the herd here. This is not going the way he wants, so he's going to. Yeah, we got to get these spirit guardians down. We're going for Gruck. Uh, with his sword attacks. Uh, he triggers an attack as he comes into 10 feet of me. All right. Mm -hmm. Gruck, you sustain 17 points of damage. Concentration check. Malik, go ahead. All right. Second attack is coming at you. All right. We'll trade uh, blows. Yeah, you trade blows as... Uh, at advantage. Yeah, Malik, you suffer 11. And I miss him with a 19, I'm sure. And you miss, yes. Grump, you ending inspiration. Fail. All right, inspiration, good. Good choice. Do it, do it. Uh, Ooh, so close. Barely enough. Yeah, does that save? Is that enough? I guess yep. it is for the amount of damage he did. Yeah, so yep, Spirit yep. Guardians is still up. Nice. He is crying out in desperate rage at this point. He cannot believe that you are still standing against him. How dare you, Gremel? 
I say, oh, you shouldn't have turned your back to me. Uh, <laughs> and I will, as my bonus action, I'll assign the moonbeam to move to him if I can place an arrow. All right, and you got I hit. Will, uh, yeah, I've got, I'm going to have a go with the waxing uh, crescent again. Uh, first attack. Ooh. No. It doesn't hit. I'm afraid Second not. Second attack. I am afraid not. Oh, no. Damn. I'm going to just look down at this thing and go... And then I was gonna grab my pistol again, and I'm gonna spend the rest of my turn trying to decide between the two. But I will also use my um, my movement just to um, Jimmy over here. <laughs> All right. At the end of your turn, uh, Anubet is going to s just storm oh, no. forward over the th over the th the group of you right here, trying oh, to knock so you all out and knock you all out of the way. Um, Saves for all three of you. He's just entered the Jackson. previous moonbeam. He has entered the moonbeam. That is true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, oh, I've, I, I closed the moonbeam spell. Let me know what my save that I need to make on that is. It's a, it's a Constitution save. Fifteen. Uh, DC seventeen. Or sorry, seventeen. Yeah. He saves on yes. that. Uh, uh, all right, so for those of you who failed uh, against this, you suffered 16 points of bludgeoning damage and you are knocked prone. Half on a success. Yeah. Uh, no. So he takes he takes 17 halved on the move for the moonbeam. Nothing on a success. On a success, you kind of dodge out of the way. On the moonbeam. Uh, it says half as much damage. No, no, on sorry. A I was I was referring to the his ability that is nothing on a success. Right. For yours, he does take eight. Yeah. Uh, so that is his legendary action, and it is now Gruck's turn. Oh. Oh yeah. Um. This caught me by surprise somehow. <laughs> uh, we're going to spiritual weapon attack one more time because it's been perfectly useful up to now. At 21, 21. Hit. misses. Yep. Oh. Um, we're <sighs> not going to hit him with our cleaver. Instead, we're going to sacred flame him again. All right. He is looking pretty banged up. Very bad. That is a 16. Not I hate enough. to use this on a cantrip, but he is going to use his second legendary resistance <laughs> because he can't mm. afford to take the damage. <sighs> All right. That's, um, that's a good for sign. It's a good sign. When you have mm -hmm. the boss burning a legendary resistance on a cantrip, it is, you know, that things are going pretty well for you, but <laughs> there is still some danger here. Saldry, it is your turn. So I will go ahead and use my bonus action to cause more of the heat metal damage. Okay. Hopefully. Uh, he will try and say uh, his constitution. Yes, sir. He takes the damage one way or the other. Uh, so that's nine points of damage, but he saves. Uh, no. So he does not have disadvantage. But he does take nine okay, points of damage, then... which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. That is good. And then I'm going to try and touch him from behind the shield with chill touch again and see if that will cooperate. All right. Good luck. Oh, natural Ooh, 20. Yes. Nice oh, one. It is the coldest finger of death no, on the back the of the spine. Touch. <laughs> Nothing uh, chill about it. Don't forget that you would double the dice, so roll yes. two more d8 on a critical. I forgot nice. to hit the critical. Uh, 20 points of damage, and yeah, oh, he's not undead, but 20 points of damage. Uh, wow. All right. He is looking banged up. Uh, he's going to, in desperation, use his remaining two legendary actions on gaze of deadly focus, he will target... Oh, gosh. He'll target Malik, who's prone. Um, he'll target Kree. And he will target um, Abasi. So first for Malik, 
uh, disadvantage because you're prone and it's a ranged attack. All right. Uh, 22. That hits. Malak, you take, uh, ooh, that's good, 17 points of necrotic damage. Resist like that, that, sucker. I don't like <laughs> that. Kree, uh, he targets you, Kree. That is a 31 to hit. You take uh, six points of necrotic damage. Not as bad as it could be. Lastly, he targets Lucky. Abasi, uh, and that is a critical oh. hit. That's not good. Uh, That's the best. Uh, for uh, 10. That's a bad crit damage roll. Bad crit damage roll. Abasi already lost his concentration, I think. Oh, wait, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He also uh, had at least that much on temp HP. He succeeds. Beautiful. Anubat is really mad now. Uh, Abasi is going to cry out and say, Press the advantage! We can take him down! And he will stride forward to get within 15 feet of the creature, at which point he will raise his sacred flame, imitating you, Gruk. Following your lead, uh, Abasi <laughs> will deal... 15 points of radiant Ooh, damage. Boy, wow. Abasi. Kree. <sighs> I'm going to see this healing spirit still right underneath me. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take a quick little detour here. And then... <laughs> <laughs> pop down. And then I'm going to... Yes, yes. And say, hey... This is a, it's, a tactical, it's a tactical maneuver. <laughs> Excuse me, Soundry. I'm just going to pop right and just going to squeeze right through here. Uh, and make no. two... Two disadvantage strikes against. Yep. Squeeze uh, in. Against Anubet. And mess up no. the first one Ooh. pretty bad. I'm sorry, there's Ooh. so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Too many no, no. limbs. He's not going down like this. Not not to you all. <laughs> and then I'll stumble into the wall and just kind of lean against. Did I get him? Did I? <laughs> no. And that'll end my turn. Malik. Oh. All right. Malik surges to his feet and he says, oh, sick of this. You die now. Not me, you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and he unleashes a relentless, reckless flurry of strikes. 23 on the first attack. 23 hits. All right. I deal. A total of 11 plus a little bit more is... 17 total points of damage on my um, first strike here. As you cleave into him, Anubet looks at you and he says, No! How dare you! Yes. You'll submit! <laughs> I don't know what he's saying, but yes. That is not pillow talk. Yeah. <laughs> At Oh. As your as your second attack just surpasses his armor class, you cleave into his mighty armor, and he is brought to one knee as he staggers unwillingly. You can see that you all at this moment have him at your mercy, and so I will ask the group, how do you collectively want to do this? You can First. each of you describe how you would contribute towards Anubet's demise. All right, I have one last attack left, so I'm going to drive my the butt of my uh, of my pole arm underneath his chin and kind of raise him up so he's kind of looking at the lot of us in in, in, in as he meets his last moments. And uh, as uh, as he does this, the moonbeam <laughs> just slams down, down. Yeah. Yeah. and scorches the well. side of his face. Uh, yeah. yeah. Everything is just dogpiling onto him at this point. Saldry, what do you what do you do to contribute to this? He would definitely use the chill touch again and make sure yeah. whatever parts were not currently being attacked were held firm and and infused with the necrotic damage. Gruck, uh, your your spirit guardians swarm over. Anything else from yeah. you? Oh, okay. Yeah. They just swarm, as all of you just contribute, um, and uh, Kree, I'm sure... I'll walk it, forward and kind of leaning on Malak and just say, I think this is the bell. 
<laughs> I think it may be as Anubet just succumbs to your collective fury and he is left on the ground slain his parts just kind of breaking and clanking apart. He's in, like a tangle of joints and limbs. The purple fire drains from his eyes and his constructed body just lays still. And behind you, Abasi, with an unbridled whoop of enthusiasm, just cheers out in victory and his voice like breaks a little bit, belying his, his normal uh, composure. Um, and you all have emerged victorious. Oh. Woo. And that was a truly uh, epic encounter, and we are way over time, so thank you so <laughs> much to all of the players for their uh, enduring patience with this. But It was uh, amazing. I, what was a, super what dramatic. an incredible, what an incredible conclusion there. Um, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to wrap up here for now, uh, I guess. Given that you did not perish as I expected you to, <laughs> um, I presume, I presume, if I can, if I can coerce everyone to return to the table at some point, that there may in fact be a part three. I'd really expected you all to die, so uh, I wasn't <laughs> planning on it. Um, but we'll talk about that and let everyone know. But uh, if you do continue, there is one of uh, Neheb Kilat's generals who remains. And beyond that, of course, the Demon Queen herself, who, as you've heard, her chains begin to sh uh, shake and rattle as she stirs within her eternal cage. So that's where we're going to leave it for tonight. Thank you all for uh, the excellent contribution as players. Thank you all watching on Twitch. I hope you enjoyed uh, the, the game today. And we will all hopefully see you again next time. Uh, it's been great. Is anyone do you want to go down the list and and let people know where they can find you or any any closing comments from the the group? Thank you for DMing. This has been amazing. That's been awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Great. It's super great. That was really good fun. The art is far too good. It's far too scary. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic right. stuff. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, hope you all have a great time. Cheers. Happy gaming. We'll see you next time. Farewell. Bye. Bye-bye.